I can speak for you. Does that help? Do I need to keep speaking? Testing, testing. Good. Hey, my chopped liver. We're gonna we're staying here for that, right? Okay. Okay. Just give us a point when you're ready. Give me a start. Give me a start. and stuff. Yeah. We're ready. We good? We close enough together?
Welcome everybody. We are here at the National Barbecue League event. My name is Jason Day. This and is I'm Megan, Megan Day. Day. That's who I am. Uh, <laughs> we are Burnt Finger Barbecue. We are going to be your hosts today for the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue Contest here in Springfield, Missouri. We're live at Club Rodeo. Yeah, and this is uh, the last time, this is our second one, right? So the last yep. time we were here, we actually we were down in Kansas City. We were at the Big Q, sorry, Big 12 Big Q competition in Kansas City, Missouri. And now today we're out here in Springfield, Missouri. Yep, today we're going to be giving you a live look at some of the top barbecue teams in the country. Last time we saw Shake and Bake take the overall grand championship and Mr. Dirt Road Barbecue with Reserve. We've got both of them here today with a whole slew of other teams as well. We're going to be following some turn-in boxes. This time we're going to take them into the judging booth as well to give you some live judges' reactions to see how their food actually reacts for those scorecards. Yeah, and it's exciting because that's not something you normally get to see, but we're going to take you in there. Yep. So each of the categories we're competing in today, it's chicken, ribs, pork, brisket. And what we've got here that we'll be showing how the, uh, the judges handle later is these scorecards. They're going to be assigning a score of one to nine for each one of the entries. Um, they're going to score them in categories of appearance, taste, and tenderness. All of those scores get added up to a total of a possible 180, 180 points in each category. And then we're going to sum those across each of the four categories to see who our overall winner is. All right. I think we're going to start taking it live over to some of the teams. Should and we we're head gonna, down and let's let's yep. meet some of our teams competing today? All right, first we've got Dirt Road Barbecue from Kansas City, Missouri. They've been competing seven years on a Jambo. They are also our American Royal Reserve Grand Champion in the Invitational and our last last we event at the Big 12 Big Q are Reserve Grand Champions. All right, good luck, guys. Good luck, Dirt Road. All right, next up, we've got Old Virginia Smoke. Luke is out of the West Virginia area. It's uh, Bristow. Did I hope that, did I say that, that right? That sounds good Virginia, enough to me. Good enough. They've been competing since 2012, and this today they're doing a, a backwood smoker, G2, a jambo, and I think they got some gateway drums hanging out there. You may remember Luke as the barbecue champion at the World Food Championships, and uh, a uh, little partner in crime is called Little General. All right, next up we've got one, two barbecue, Mr. Steve Hayden out of New Berlin. He's been competing for 11 years. He's got his Jambo J3 here today. Steve is the 2018 American Royal Invitational Reserve Grand Champion, the 2018 King of the Smoker Reserve Grand Champion, and the 2017 American Royal Pork Champion with a perfect, perfect. Good luck, Steve, and one, two, barbecue. Up next, we've got Richard Fergola with Fergalicious Barbecue. He's out of Gardner, Kansas, and he's been competing for about seven years. He's got Myron Mix and Smoker cranking it out right now. He's working so he's, fast down, they can't he, even see him. You can't even <laughs> see the guy. But you know what? You know where you did see him? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's, there he is. he's giving signs in the he, corner. Okay. There all he is. All right, all right. <laughs> well, where you did see him was on Chopped Grill Masters, and he was on Barbecue Pit Masters, and he owns Casey Grilling Company and uses something called Love Rub. Good luck today, Richard. Yeah, we'll be checking back in with Richard in the brisket category for sure. Coming up next is Boomerang Barbecue out of Lubbock, Texas. This is Matt and Sarah Walker. They are last year's KCBS reserved overall grand champion in the KCBS team of the year. They cook on Yoder smokers, a Cimarron a stick burner, and a 1500 pellet cooker. They've also just become a, a member of the Insane Can Posse, getting their new gateway drum smoker this just this weekend, actually. It's, it's got their dog Floyd on the side of it. Uh, they were also the Rib King this year in the 2018 KCBS Team of the Year. Number two pork, number one chicken, and number two brisket. And they are, they've got their eyes set, their sights set on beating Beefy Jesus this weekend. That's the Mr. Getting Basted who we'll meet here in just a few minutes. Good luck to you guys, Boomerang. Up next. Oh. Hey, the Blues Hog Promo Tent. Hey, Blues Hog Promo Tent. Great to see you guys. How's it going? They're handing out some deliciousness. Yeah. I know they're cooking up some Snake River Farms Kulat steaks that we, we sampled at the VIP event last night. All right. I'm sure everything's looking delicious there at the sample tent. The next team that we're going to be looking and taking a look at is the Shake and Bake Barbecue team, our grand champion from last event down at the Big 12 Big Q. That's Tim Shear that we can see right there, the tallest man in barbecue. He's got his extra tall prep table next to his gateway drum smokers, <laughs> giving a little wave to the crowd. 
Shake and Bake's out of New Haven, Missouri. They've been competing since 2012. They are the proprietors of the Gateway Drum Smokers. He's got a whole slew of them there that he's managing today. 2016 number one pork team of the year for the overall Kansas City Barbecue Society circuit. 2017 American Royal Pork Champions. 2017 um, team of the year runner up. And in his, not, in his time when he's not doing barbecue, he's man in a DJ booth. Good luck, Shake and Bake. All right, who we got next? Oh, Sugar Fire Smokehouse. Mike, how's it going, buddy? They're, he's out of the St. Louis area, and guess what? He's been competing for about 10 years now. He has joined the in can, Insane Camp Posse as well. Very first time ever he's cooking on those drums. And he's a two-time seafood champ from Memphis in May. He's uh, got some of the best barbecue in St. Louis and a Patriot Award for hiring veterans via the U.S. government. He's doing competition in restaurants. Good luck to you. I, I hear there's a bet between Fergalicious and uh, Sugar Fire Smokehouse, so be sure and stay tuned and see who's going to win that bet. 100 bucks is on the line. All right, next up out of the St. Louis Barbecue Society, we've got the SLBS Barbecue Team of the Year, Brew Hogs Barbecue. This is a team of Keith Boatwright and Nate Groden. These guys used to compete separately under Brewmasters and, and Outlaw Hogs. All right. They come together now to make Brew Hogs. They, uh, Keith was the 2015 Sam's Club Barbecue Challenge overall champion. And this last year, 2018, the two of them combined with the St. Louis Barbecue Society Team of the Year. Com Overall in their careers, they've combined for 30 plus grand and reserved grand champions. Welcome to have you guys. All right, next up we've got the Smokin' Hills. We've got Lauren and Cheryl Hill from Overland Park, Kansas. She thinks they've been competing for about 14 years, right, Cheryl? Uh, Gateway Drum Smokers is what they're cooking on, and 2015 was their year. They were the American Royal Invitation Grand Champions. Then they went on to win the World Food Championships barbecue, and then they took it all with the World Food Championships in 2015 as well. Welcome to have Lauren, the Gazelle, Hill, and Cheryl. Good luck today, guys. All right, last but not least, the man that everyone refers to around here is Beefy Jesus. It's Brad Leiniger getting basted out of Branson, Missouri. He's been competing since 2012 on a slew of gateway drums that you see lined right up there in front of his cook site. He's the 2018 Kansas City Barbecue Society Team of the Year. They have a restaurant down in Branson uh, and, and in Hollister, Missouri. They're getting basic restaurants in Branson and the Downing Street Poor Houses in Hollister. And this weekend, he's got his, his eyes set on beating his rival, a champion from the last event, Mr. Tim Shear from Shake and Bake Barbecue. Good luck, Brad. We'll check in with you a little bit later. Thanks. All right, now that we've met our teams, we're going to step through a little bit about what these guys are going to be trying to accomplish today. So we've got four different categories that they're going to be cooking for. Right now, they're working on their chicken. We've got yep. a few minutes left before we get into the live look on how these guys will do their chicken boxing. Um, and then we're going to follow them through. So should we dive back into the scorecard yeah. here a little bit and show folks at home what, what Whoa, these judges are going to be looking for? The wind is crazy. For? The wind is crazy. Yeah. So th these are the mats. These are the place mats that the judges will all have in front of them. And they'll start putting each of the cat, each of the entries that they receive in each one of these little spots. So, each there's six judges um, is how we're gonna. Can you ah, can you, you see, see those? that? Can you see that? Yeah. So six judges, you know, they're gonna have six entries and they're gonna put them down on that spot um, so that they can try it, take a bite, make their scores, and be able to keep them in order. And in between those bites, they're also gonna <laughs> take some crackers and they're gonna eat those and do a little. Uh, palate cleanser. Hopefully we'll get to see some of that action today when I go in inside and do that. Um, this yellow one right here, this yellow card that I'm going to hold up. Ah. We got some wind. Sometimes you, sometimes you want to see that thing and sometimes you don't want to see that thing as a oh. competitor because that's the comment card. These are comment cards. When a judge has something to tell you beyond just your scores, this is what they use. So it'll be interesting to see if we see any of these come out of the judging booth today. For the most part, these, these score slips here itemize exactly what the judge is adding up for each of the contestants. It, the scores range from nine being excellent all the way down to one disqualified. So we don't want to see any ones today. We'll see if these guys can get all their food in and, and be uh, eligible for points. What would what would be a disqualification, Jason? Can so, you kind of talk about that? Yeah, there's certain there's certain rules that the teams have to abide by, specifically around the garnish, the type of garnish that they use. You're not allowed to pull uh, pool any type of barbecue sauce in the corner of your box. If you want the judges to sample barbecue sauce, it needs to be applied to the meat. 
There can also be no foreign objects. If there's toothpicks, there's aluminum foil inside that competition box, you're going to get disqualified. Point the, the reason why is because that could give an indication as to whose food is related to he, which you, team. Yeah, you may, have, you may have come up to a judge and said, yeah. hey, look for hey, X, look for Y, Z, yeah. look for the toothpicks, and that's going to be mine. Yeah, this is a double-blind judging system, so they don't know whose food they're, they're sampling. We're going to give you a live look of how the box from a team goes all the way into the judging booth, and you will know whose food that judge is tasting, but they will not. All right. How are we on, how are we on time? We're, we're all kind of running through this yeah. and on the fly. We've got 147, so... All right, yeah, so we're, we're ready to, to head on down. We're going to start taking a look at Old Virginia Smoke and see how they're checking it. So I'm going to head on down there. Okay. All right. Oh, I see right there we've got, uh, looks like Luke is checking out his chicken. He's picking out those beauties. I see that. Thank you for getting my card. It's just a little bit windy up here, but that's okay. Hopefully it's not affecting any of the teams down there. So. Basically, what's happening here is you've got you've got a cleanup on aisle six here. We've got Luke who's going to make sure that that cook site looks good. He's got his box, as you can see. There's some. I'm not sure if he's using parsley or kale. I'm going to throw it down to Jason. He's talking to him. All right. How you doing, buddy? It. This looks good, man. So what we got? We got chicken thighs here. Yes, sir. All right, looks like you guys have got these n sauced nice and neat, finished off, and you're going to head them on into the, uh, the box for the judges. Yes. Is there anything you're, you're looking for as you're picking out the samples that go in? I'm looking for six or seven of the same size, uh, looking for juice, tenderness, how they feel in my hand. So one of the things you were telling me earlier that you weren't sure if you were going to give us a live look at because you didn't want your, one of your secrets to be let out was what, how many chicken thighs you were actually going to put in the box. It looks like maybe uh, with the arrangement you're starting here, you're, you may go a little bit more than the typical six chicken thighs. Is that right? I might go a little gangster on it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So looks like he's going to be stacking two on each side there. That'll give him a, a seven chicken thigh arrangement. Typically with, the comp with competition barbecue, you, well, you do have to get at least six samples into the, into the box. That's going to give one sample for every one of the judges that will be sampling this food. Is there any, any reason why you think you need to have seven in there? I just think it'll be a little different, show us a little something new, and hopefully give judges a nice choice today. You know? Yeah, the last time we talked to somebody about this, they said they like the seven in there because that gives the last judge a choice. They're not, they're not eating the, the leftovers from all the other judges. It gives them, give them the option of choice as well, and it never hurts to give the table captain, the guy overseeing the judging, uh, a, li a little snack as well. So, All right, so what these guys are doing now is Finishing up, touching up any of the little edges. We can see some Q-tips here. There's some sauce spots that are on the edge of the box. All that plays into the appearance score. So he's touching those areas up, trying to make this box look as beautiful as possible. All right, Megan, we're going to come back to you. Well, okay, great. Thank you. I'm so glad you're back to me. And uh, wanted to talk just a little bit about, you know, chicken. Most of the guys that are going to be out here are going to be thighs. That's, that's usually what they're going to go for. Every now and then you're going to see someone who's going to set themselves apart, as you may remember. There's wings. There's drumsticks that they could do. Last time we were out in Kansas City, they were do, uh, Brad turned in some wings. Didn't turn out, I think, the way he was hoping that it would, but typically people are going to be doing those thighs. You've got people who are going to think that they want to do scraping of the chicken skins, people who are going to inject brine. Um, we had some conversations with some folks out here earlier today just kind of trying to figure out what it is that they're doing and hopefully over the course of this year you're going to see some different ways that people are using some flavor injection within their within their thighs all right i think we're going to pass it down on to to jason okay jason you're up buddy all right we're still here with old virginia smoke they're finishing up their box here just touching up some of the areas now i know I noticed here you're using the sauce off of the chicken thighs, not the sauce that's inside this pan. Can you, can you give me a reason why, why you're doing that? Well, we set the sauce and we put it in there on the can and got a little more flavor on it. So we don't want to use sauce that doesn't have that flavor on it. We want everything to match. Gotcha, gotcha. So they, these chicken thighs came off the, the, the pit originally. You put barbecue sauce back on them. The sauce is, has thickened up and ca almost caramelized a little bit. So you, you want to make sure that flavor is what's getting back on those chicken thighs. Makes sense, makes sense. Whoa, what's that guy? Maybe a little finishing salt here. Ah, a little touch of love right at the end. All right, let's see this going on. 
Nice. So what this is going to do is just add a little flavor pop to those judges. What we didn't see is these guys sampling this chicken before they started boxing. So they know exactly what this tastes like, and they know exactly how much additional seasoning to put on here. Is, is this the final step? Is this the last thing, or we got anything else? All right. We got our substitute little general. Do you need to do anything special? Do you need to kiss the box or anything before it heads in? No, no, no little dance? Good luck dance? <laughs> All right, here it goes. Closing her up, and that's it. And we'll follow this guy on up to the to the judging booth. Good luck to you. Thank you. What do you think? How'd it go? Good chicken. Tastes good. All right. We're right. heading back up to you, Megan. Okay, here we are. We're back up here. So what's happening now is all of those teams are starting to put their chicken entries together, um, and they're going to take them up to where all of the judges have congregated. You can see a live look inside here right now. How cool is this? You can see the teams are bringing in their boxes and setting it down ever so gently. You want to make sure that it doesn't get jostled because really appearance is very important. You've got every single one of these teams that have a window of time. You've got five minutes before and five minutes after, and there is no, no forgiveness on that. And you can see you've also got your rep, Miss Kim's in there, talking with, uh, talking, th talking it through, making sure that everybody that's coming in, they're recording it. They're going like Jason had said earlier. Yeah. We've got a what two minute warning? Is that what, what we heard? That? What was that warning? What was the warning? Two-minute warning, two minute so that warning. means the, the teams have two minutes to get their boxes in into the uh, the judging area. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're coming to the end of our chicken category here. What we saw down from the competitors was mostly chicken thighs. I, I was down with the old Virginia smoke, but I could see the other guys cooking right around us too. Look like a lot of chicken thighs were happening, which is pretty standard yeah. for competition yeah. barbecue. The cooks choose to cook chicken uh, chicken thighs because <laughs> it's the yeah, they gotta cook chicken. They gotta cook chicken. <laughs> but chicken thighs are they're, are, they're a little fattier, they're juicier, Fat they hold meat. moisture uh, a little bit better than a chicken breast or chicken wing. Um, so we did see some drumsticks last time. Mr. Brad Leiniger took a took a drumstick a little, and uh, wings did not didn't yeah, work out. Didn't, didn't work out for him. So he's back to chicken thighs this weekend. Did as you well. see? Did you see he had thighs over there? Uh, no. So he he came running over to to take a peek and see what old Virginia Smoke <laughs> was doing. So I think he may. Uh, he may have some interest there. Yeah, he does. I Luke like is that. one of the one of the previous Barbecue Society Team of the Year in chicken, so he knows exactly what's going on. He changed his recipe up a little bit this time too, so we'll see if the judges like it a little better. Are you able to tell us what he did, or is that top secret? Well, I, I had something to do with unicorns. That's about all I know. <laughs> some unicorns and rainbows for them. So we've got. So we're coming down to the last couple minutes. I see a couple folks that yeah. are that are bringing their boxes up, and I, I, I'm sorry you can't see this, but. They're checking, they're setting it down, and they're actually opening their box and looking inside. Um, there is. Yeah, we've got Boomerang over there. I yeah. see Fergolicious, 1 2 BBQ. Here's Dirt, Dirt Road. Road. So, part of the Barbecue Society rules is if you are in line at that judging table and there's teams in front of you, you are good to go. But in, typically, if, there's n if there was nobody in that line and that, that clock struck, to the end of the turn-in period, that's grounds for disqualification. So not only do you have to have the perfect food cooked, you have to have the perfect co food cooked in the turn-in window, and it's five minutes before and five minutes after. Oh, what do we got going we on looks there? Looks like we got some oaths going on here. Looks like the judging oath is happening with the, the judging table inside the building here. I bet they're ready to get, get that chicken in on their plates. So, so that usually means that there's some new judges. Yeah, there's there's definitely some new judges here that have been sworn in and went through a quick judging oh, there's class. There's Karen Murphy. There's well, Boomerang. What they are also doing is taking the judges' oath, um, committing to the the KCBS process and and swearing in that this is going to be a fair and impartial barbecue contest. Um, so they do that before every single contest, before the food starts coming in. So. All right, I think we're going to toss it over to a lovely commercial and thank some of our sponsors who've been helping us make this possible. The thing I love about the Snake River Farms American Wagyu is what you get when you get the cross between the Japanese Wagyu, which is known for its marbling, its sweet flavor, and then you combine that with the American traditional beef. And when you combine those two together, you get that deep, meaty flavor from the American beef combined with that sweet marbling, and it creates a unique and extraordinary product.
and baste it. Uh, we're gonna tour the bus, tour the little cube back there behind it. Let's go have a look. Pretty much everything on this beauty is broken. So, you know, it's all barbecue equipment. We're very good on buying stuff, very bad on maintenance. So, uh, the step doesn't work, but we've got a replacement, so. Got the air conditioner running. Got the bed folded out for the kids. The uh, very important Hello Kitty blanket. That's what I usually end up sleeping with. I uh, got the captain's chair right there. We drive down the road. The uh, broken refrigerator. Yeah, it's still hot. Come on back here, we got the bedroom. Beautiful. Shower, all the good stuff you need. That's the bus. That's where we all sleep. We usually have, I don't know, we'll probably have eight people crammed in this stupid thing this weekend. I'm not even sure who all's coming down, but a bunch of kids and everybody else. That's the cooking happens back here in the cube. You can see my fine job that I've done screwing this thing on. It fell off one time driving down the road, so got a couple of brackets. Come on in. This is it. Camro, workspace, another table. And then out here we got the patio, it's got the drums. Showing everybody my beautiful trailer. It's taking a long time. We're doing a little tour. T Mac, everybody. Maria. So we just got the drums. Just had this four foot deal. I had a two foot extension, so I put the drums on it. That's pretty much it. Barbecue League event at at Blues Brews and Barbecue. We have the chicken category underway right now. All of our teams but one have their entries in the judging booth. Mike Johnson with Sugar Fire Smokehouse. He's still out here prepping his chicken. Mike got a little bit of a late, uh, actually an early start today. He started his chicken an hour early because turn-ins typically for Kansas City Barbecue Society start at noon and then 12:30 for ribs one for pork and 130 for brisket so today everything was pushed back for this special event to three o'clock so mike mike actually got his timelines a little mixed up probably because he's taking side bets with fergolicious over there so who who knows how this is all going to play out but there's a hundred dollars cash on the line the timeline the time the time clock is actually ticking i'm looking over there at the turn-in booth to see if we're going to get him coming up any moment now we are probably getting down to the final seconds maybe even final minutes or seconds for when that turn-in window will close and if that happens we may have a disqualification today i'm gonna take a peek back here i don't even see him walking so it, he the rest of the the oh here he is he's just coming back out of the judging booth so i guess we have all of our samples into the judging area right now the judge process couldn't begin until he had his samples in with the judges because that tray was being held back for that table because they want to take all the samples from all six teams to the table at one time. And I think we now have everything we need, so we're going to head on inside and check in with Megan with the judges. She's live. We're inside. We're here with all of the judges. So what just happened was we had Sugarfire pulled theirs in, and first stop is going to be come on over here. We've got some uh, stickers that they change out the numbers because this is double blind. We don't want anyone to know whose box it is. We don't want there to be markings inside the box. They don't want anyone to know what the number correspondence is. So they're going to change out those sticker numbers. So when those judges get that box, they really have no idea who the team is that they're going to be judging. And so come on in. We're going to take a look. I don't want to show those stickers. That's super, super private stickers, but you're the sticker station. And so, and it's, it is a very serious job. It is. You were waiting on that last one. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't deliver the rest of it to the table until that last one came in. And uh, once it came in, we were able to put the last sticker on and get it over there. So you had probably a good solid two to three minute wait. Is that yeah. right? But how long? 
We probably waited about three minutes, but he was still within his window, so it was okay. Yeah. Still within the window, but there's some strategy there. So there's some folks who will say, hey, I'm going to make all those guys wait until I get mine in and mine's going to be piping hot and fresh. So, you know, some strategy there. But what? Yeah, that's it. You never know. You never know what's going on or it might just be that he didn't get it done. I don't know. But he got it in in time, which is the most important part because we talked about the fact that you can get disqualified. That is one easy way to get disqualified is if you don't make it in on that window and there is zero tolerance on that. So they watch it down to the down to the millisecond. So. What's happening over here, we're gonna kinda get in. This is, I, I, I gotta make sure I'm not gonna get my hand slapped. We're going on in. Okay, this is really exciting. I've done some judging myself and it's really fun to see how intense these guys and gals are. A lot of people have taken the class. You learn about what's gonna happen, but until you're really in and tasting it, you don't realize, I mean, you could have six beautiful entries right on your plate and every single one of them could deserve to win and that's what's going to happen here today is you've got the best in the country that are competing so you want to go on on here he's going to get in a little bit closer and i'm going to kind of let you know what they're doing we've got six we got six folks with entries we've got we've got a table captain who is going to show those boxes for the presentation to get ready. This is exactly what she's doing right now. She's making sure that every single person gets a chance to see what that box looks like and they pick whichever piece and then pass it to the next one. Dirty fingers and all, they've got their napkins ready. You'll see they got their saltines. Wanna make sure the cracker helps them cleanse their palate. Oh, we've got a leg turn in. Hey, hey, hey. That's exciting. Yeah, this is really cool. So you're getting to see most guys are turning in thighs, but we've got somebody who did legs. Jason, we're gonna send it down to you with Boomerang, and we're gonna see what's happening with ribs. All right, I'm here with Boomerang Barbecue. We are get coming in on the rib category right now. I've got Sarah over here working on her box. We have Matt over here. Were you just checking on ribs? You got, they got something going on there? Just sauce? All right, he's got his sauce in a pan, soaking up some heat, soaking up some smoke. I'm gonna stay out of their way a little bit. They're a well-oiled machine here. You, why, don't, why aren't you wearing your Rib King jacket? Um, thank you, Matt. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. He doesn't want to glow. For those at home that don't know what I'm talking about, each year at the Kansas City Barbecue Society Banquet, a tradition has been struck that the previous rib team of the year makes a blazer of some sort, a custom arts and craft project, and then hands it off to the next Rib King. And Matt was lucky enough to bring home the Rib King jacket this last year. So what uh, what are we looking for as far as time? How, how long are we until we see something come off of the pit? About four minutes. About four minutes? All right, well, let's talk a little bit about Lubbock, Texas and Texas Tech. I think you guys have uh, you guys have a little bit of stakes happening in the Final Four this weekend. We do. I know everybody at home is looking for Pat Mahomes to be a, on the uh, Texas Tech game as well. He has to be. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. All right, that's enough about that. We just had to get it in. Had to get it in. Texas Tech, Texas Tech, Texas Tech, Texas Tech. <laughs> All right, so the, pit, the, the ribs that you have on the pit right now, are they still wrapped up? You've got them in the Cambro? Okay, so you're just simply waiting on timeline at this point. Gotcha. And you've got your turn in box, excuse me, available over there. I see Floyd, he's giving me the stink eye from under the table. We're waiting just so they stay nice and hot. Is that what you're looking for? I see you guys are pacing back and forth quite a bit and getting, getting excited to get these in. What'd you think about your chicken? Money. Money? Let's see that drum roll. Oh, yeah. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, he's stirring up his sauce here. So what's. Yes, yes, you were. <laughs> so what he's doing, stirring up his sauce, getting it ready. You can see how he's got his workstation all laid out. These guys do this week in and week out. This is a, a finely tuned process that I'm standing right in the middle of. So they're going to be pulling these ribs out. Part of what they're looking for here is to find the slabs or slab or slabs that need to go to the judges. They've got, it looks like four different slabs of ribs that they've cooked. He's putting a little bit of sauce down on the cutting board. 
Uh, I, I assume that that's so when he puts his ribs down, they're not hitting just bare cutting board. There's a, there's a little bit of liquid on the surface that's going to keep that bark attached. They've worked really, really hard to put flavor inside these ribs, not just the rib from the rub and the seasoning, but also the liquid that go inside here. A lot of guys do brown sugar and honey, and I think, you, as you told me earlier, you're in the same way. You've got a lot of good sweeteners inside here. They want to complement the natural pork flavor and try and get as much flavor into that judge's mouth as possible. So how'd that first slab feel? Uh, they're tender. They're tender. They look tender. So what I'm seeing is some blowouts happening. That means the blowouts are on the how the bones are uh, attaching on the back of the rib. That means they're perfect. That means you like the blowouts. All right. Nice. Noted. You're not, you're not going with any of those? Look at these guys. Look at the color on that. Submerged in all that juicy pork liquid. And then down. I see he's got an electric knife here. You're going to run that through each one of these bones, and then they're going to taste each slab to figure out which one's going to go to the judge. All right, and I think we're going to go up and check in with Megan in the judging tent. each one of their entries. Just as a reminder, this is not comparative judging. Each one of these entries has an opportunity to get a score between one and nine. One being disqualification, as we've talked about, and number nine being excellent. So they really do have the opportunity to have nines on every single piece of chicken in front of them. I'm hearing some moans and some delicious uh, you know, responses to what, you, what they're eating. And you can see we've got judges who are kind of picking off some of the parsley, um, picking it out of their teeth. We've got some thumbs up, some big wide eyes. Some, so that's fun to see. You just really don't get a chance to get in here and, and see this. But what they're going to do is bite through skin. That's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for juiciness, making sure that the chicken has a flavor that's maybe not a standout flavor. That's something that's really important. It has to be a good balance. And if there's a standout flavor, a lot of times that would work against a team. You've got your table captain who's making sure that she's picking up all of the entries. And she's going to review that to make sure that they understand how the system is and how it's scored. If she sees a low score, she may ask them to fill out a comment card. We talked about that yellow comment card. It can be that it was the best chicken they've ever eaten, or it could be that, man, that was too salty or, or giving some kind of critical feedback. Sometimes it's a good thing to get that yellow card. Oh, we have, we have a yellow card being written by one of the judges. Be curious. We'll see if we can get some commentary on what that comment card says. We've got everybody writing down Again, appearance is the first score they're going to get. Taste is going to be the next score. And tenderness is going to be the final score for each one of those box numbers. Oh, and look at this. We've got some family that's here. How fun is this? They, they're, they're lining up to get what's left of that chicken and try those. Be anxious to find out who turned in that chicken leg. If uh, Brad came back, do we know if Brad, Brad turned in the chicken legs? We don't know. I'm getting the nope, no clue. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to toss it back to Jason. The fun has just begun here in the judges arena. Have fun, Jason. All right, we are now, we've got all the slabs out, still here at Boomerang Barbecue. So what he's done, Matt's gone through and he's sauced each one of these slabs on the top side and then flipped them over. And as you can hear, he's got his electric knife going on here. He's just zipping through each one of these slabs, just slicing them all up. I think he's, he's probably checking for tenderness, how the, how the meat feels on the knife. And you can see here, I was talking about the, the, uh, the blowouts on the back of the bone. I'm not going to stick my hand in there right now while he's got that electric knife going. But it's some of these, some of these bones you can see like right over there where the bone's sticking out a little bit further the back membrane that's on these ribs that bone's releasing from. That's an indication of tenderness, and Matt said he's seeing exactly what he wants in each one of these ribs. It's been a good rib day for him. He's cooking St. Louis spares here. This is their, this is their first taste. 
They're in they're in game face right now. They're looking looking pretty happy. Is this what you're wanting to see? Want, what you're wanting to taste? Yes, sir. All right. So, haha. <laughs> there's a, there's a line of people here that are interested in helping taste these. So he's going through each. Even though these are all pork ribs, each slab will is from a different animal, so they can each taste slightly different. And the way that they soak up the seasonings and the sauce and the smoke, all of that comes together and can yield a completely different product. So what these guys are doing is tasting their way through the slabs that they cook, seeing which ones taste the best, and any flavor adjustments that they need to make as they go into the box. Most importantly, I think they're, they're probably trying to make sure the salt content's right, or if they need to balance out any spiciness. What do you think? Are you going to have to make any adjustments to these? No, sir. No, not at all. He's, he's nailing his ribs today. Look at those, flipping them over. So it looks like, looks like, from what I can tell, you guys are concentrating kind of right in the middle of the slab. So those are the, that's the short end. We're working our way back down towards the long end. And then he's done. The goal here is to get at least six uh, ribs in the box. That we need one for each judge. It looks like here he's, he's sizing up color, appearance, Gonna pick out which ones are gonna go in, and if I had to guess, I'd say Matt's gonna do the classic double stack here. Maybe a five on, oh, six on six, five on six. That typically comes out just depending on how each of these guys feel their ribs turn out on a given week. A big full box of ribs is an indication to the judge that the cook is super proud of the product that they they produce today. Uh, it could be it could be that you only have six ribs that are that are turn in worthy, so. Teams aren't afraid to send six bones in, but I, as, a, as me on the cook side, I'm always looking to turn turn more than six in if I can get them in the box. All right, we're setting them here. Are these gonna go back on the pit? Yes. Back All right, so these guys, he's got some sauce on them. He sauced the tops, putting a little more, squeezing them on this rack, and they're gonna go back on the pit. So what he's doing here is dropping them on, it's gonna close it, and these ribs are gonna soak, especially with that sauce on there. The sauce is gonna, like we saw on the chicken, it's gonna tack up a little bit. It's gonna get a little, it's gonna get a little thicker, and it's gonna soak up some of that smoke. So when these ribs get wrapped up in aluminum foil, that steaming process will actually drive some of the smoke flavor out of the pork. And this is an, this is an easy way to get some of that smoke flavor back on the ribs. Just add a little sauce, put them back on your pit. You also have to be very careful not to run too much smoke during this time because that can very easily get overpowering. I talked to these guys earlier about what smoke they were running here, and they, most of the teams here are, uh, are cooking over pecan wood. These guys have hickory. They've got the, the Riptangle can-style smoker here, plus they've got a Yoder stick burner and a Yoder pellet cooker over here as well, and it's hickory on every single one of those. Is it? Is there any any reason you're run, not running pecan like everybody else? I like hickory. That's just what you like. I like trying to stand out. All right. So here at this event as well, they're sending some extra slabs of ribs in for the uh, the special judges that are kind of simulating. So they're going through, getting some extra bones ready. These are the rejects here. These aren't going to make the judging table. So they're just going to stack them up. They're nice and glazed, and they're set them aside. And as soon as they're done, how long do those typically go in? Five minutes or so? Eight to ten, Eight to ten minutes of uh, smoking there on the... Uh, running pretty hot today, so. He said it's running a little hot, so they may pull them off a little bit earlier. Those will come out, and then they'll make their box, and we'll follow that box in into the judging booth. All right, doing a little clean up here. Floyd's giving me the stink eye again. I don't think he likes other people being in your cook site during turn-ins. <laughs> no shigging, no shigging. <laughs> All right, you're gonna get tidy up a little bit. Let me get out of your way. All right, what do you think? How, how many of those do you think are gonna make the box today? Mm, eight. Eight? eight. You think a full eight? Four on four, five under three? The only way we can really do this. All right, I'd say that's what the judges are looking for. Even fed it to me. Ram, I love it. That's about, I'm going to hold that back up here. This is going to give you an indication of what the judges are going to be looking for inside that booth. You see that, how tender that meat is? You can get right down to the bone. The meat pulls cleanly off the bone. It was just melt in my mouth, full of flavor. But you notice the rest of that tender meat holds right on the bone. I can shake this guy, and that bone's not coming off. Oh, that's a good sign. It's not good barbecue. <laughs> 
It's not good barbecue unless you have to shower afterwards. And I'm gonna go in for another bite here. That's called the double bite. Look at that. That's exactly why these guys are the rib kings. Kings and queens. Did they, they didn't give you a jacket, did they? We'll fix that, we'll fix that. If the judge experiences this inside the booth, this is gonna be a good thing for Boomerang Barbecue today. Nice job, guys. All right, we're gonna go up and check in with Megan. We're live. Look, guys, look who I found in the judge's room. We've got Mike Peters. Mike, who are you? Um, I'm just some schlub that used to be on the KCBS board. So now all I get to do is uh, judge barbecue, so it's great. And don't you travel around and kind of preach the gospel? We do. A Great American Cookout Tour starts at Rock and Ribs here in about two, three weeks, two or three weeks, something like that. So. Burnfinger Barbecue is going down to Rock and Ribs to defend our title as Grand Champion, so we'll be down there. Hey, thanks so much for taking a minute here. We're going to talk about the chicken and what happened. We were able to follow a chicken box in here. We're going to talk about that one, but what caught my eye and the reason I said, Mike, get over here, you did a comment card, that yellow comment card, and I want to know was it a good comment or was it a here's some criticism, constructive, tell you a little bit more? Give me give me some info on that yellow card, if you will. Uh, that was the best piece of chicken I think I've almost ever eaten. And you know my wife does great chicken, and I love her sauce, but the, the, the sauce was perfect and with a touch of heat on the back end was just amazing. And I, I don't think I've ever had that in judging that pronounced sweet to heat that I got off of this. My wife's is all sweet to sweet which is great and I love that, but this was fantastic. The presentation was great. This is live, Chris, he's talking, you know, talk, she's talking about you, so. Uh, but Mike, um, tell me then, we, did, we do know the number of the box that we followed in here. So Luke Darnell with Old Virginia Smoke, uh, can you tell us, because we know which piece of chicken that was, what was your impression about that piece of chicken? Um, the presentation was the best. It looked the best. That I think was probably my only nine out of the whole thing. Um, the taste-wise was a little, it was okay. It just w didn't pow you with that sweet to heat. It didn't pow you with anything. It was good, but it wasn't outstanding. Well, and that's fair because this is one bite barbecue. Yes. That's what competition barbecue is, is you've got to have the bite through skin, the right tenderness, for that you and, and you got to you got to have a good presentation and you kind of have to have that stand out that is a, a wow right and I will say somebody turned in legs and we are now probably 10 minutes after eating my lips are still hot from it went sweet to heat but it went to a little too much heat in for me yeah. but um, the legs were they look fantastic so whoever was brave enough to do legs out there gets a pat on the back uh, we, we I doubt there's very many that did legs, so we're probably gonna figure out who that was pretty quick. So that, that's really fascinating. Um, overall, what was your impression? The guys around you, you kind of talked, I saw a few of them talking about that, what did they think? Oh, the same, same agreement with uh, the, the one that we liked the best. Um, and, it was, and it was a we, we liked it best. We all liked it the best. Uh, it had the bite through chicken, it was great. That sweet to heat, uh, it was amazing. The, the guy next to me is not a certified judge and he was like, wow, this is what you were talking about with these layering of flavors. Yeah. So no, and we, we explained to them there's no bad barbecue today. Yeah. It's all good barbecue. Yeah, this is the best of the best, and so we're here. And I appreciate your time today Absolutely. to do this. You've got ribs coming up. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, ribs are my favorite, so I'm gonna, the, the, the bones will be all that's left. All right, so we've got 10 minute warning on uh, getting ready for the ribs. So everybody's using the restroom, washing their hands. Getting, getting ready, what do, you, what do you look for in ribs? What are you gonna look for? To, to me, the consistency. Um, I, I like how it looks in a box. Hopefully we get the double, double stack rows. I love those. I love the, the mahogany color on the top. A uh, little touch of seasonings that you can see through the sauce wise. Uh, again, it's, it's all gonna be good. So I'm, I'm anxious for this. All right, how, are we ready to go back down to ribs? Let's see what's going on. I think we're down to the last few minutes. Jason, take it away. All right, I'm here with Boomerang Barbecue still. We got some happy folks in here because I think I found who turned in the chicken legs. There was some happy dance happening just a second ago, but they've they got their game face back on uh, with these ribs. So Matt here, he's got, he told me he was looking at eight, but I think I see 10 bones in the box here. He, he's pretty happy about these ribs. I think he wants to put forth a pretty fancy, big, full rib box. 
all of the ones except the end pieces you had on this this rack here that came off the pit have made it into the turn-in box. And this, from a competition barbecue perspective, is about as pretty as you can get for a, uh, a barbecue turn-in box, which is exactly why these guys were the rib teams of the year last year for the entire the entire season for the Kansas City Barbecue Society. So what he's doing now, he's looking at some of these areas that need a little touch-up. Sometimes when these ribs go back onto the cooker for that final glazing, the sauce can soak in. You can start to get a little bit of a matte finish in a couple areas. So he's dragging his, his glaze right back over the top, trying to make sure that high gloss shine sets in. What that's going to do is make it look really, really good for the judges. As this is going to sit probably 15, 20 minutes or so before the judges get around to probably 15 minutes by the time they get through appearance. It walks all the way through to the judging table. Uh, so this high gloss shine is going to hold up and, and make this look juicy even after this barbecue sat for about 15 minutes. Sarah's digging in here with some tweezers. Looks like she's making an adjustment to the box of the parsley. She was meticulously working on this as I came up a little minute, a little, a few minutes ago. There's a perfect bed of, it's actually not parsley, that's kale under there. Kale that she has sculpted and pressed down inside this box. What are you looking for? Is there anything that you're trying to identify? Um, just to make it look nice and neat, you don't want anything chunky sticking out. Just nice and smooth and pretty. Well, I'd say mission accomplished there. Are you? Is is there going to be any finishing powder? Did you change your mind on that, or is this good? You're out. You're out because it's done. I already tied. And that's is that exactly what you're looking to do at a contest? Yes. All right. You like that? You're, you turn that in every week. Uh, my ribs this week weren't that straight, and so I think I did a good job on them. Yeah, they look look. Yeah. They weren't they weren't as straight as they usually are, so I think I I did pretty good with them. Well, a good thing straightness isn't one of the categories the judges are going to be looking for today. We've got, it's part, could tie into your appearance score. And what he said is they're hard to cut when they're not straight. So what he's done is, well, if the, the rib is kind of sideways, he'll make his cuts like that in order to give a nice rectangular rib. And that's what you did, right? Yes. And so you could see it was rectangle on top of rectangle there, and it made a nice, nice presentation for those judges. Sarah just ran out of here. She's getting her box up to the judges and I think we're, we're going to toss this back up to the booth now. All right. Nice job, ma'am. All right. So doing a little commentary here on what's happening. We have got teams turning in ribs right now the window has opened and looks like boomerang just turned in their ribs i think jason's been following some action with them this whole time so as a reminder they've got five minutes before and they've got five minutes after the hour to uh, get this actually at uh, half hour sorry to get their entry turned in and the judges are putting them together they're going to switch out that number they're looking to see what table had the previous entry from that team gone to, and they're going to make sure that they're hitting a different table of judges. That's pretty important. Yeah, we're, we're up. We're live. We're live! <laughs> so how was, how was that, that rendezvous? Looks like Boomerang just pulled in and, and pulled their boxes. They feeling pretty good? Yeah, they feel great. They, they set out to do exactly what they wanted to do. They had a lot of bones to choose from. They did a full 10 bone box, which was fantastic for them. They're on cloud nine too, because they, they got the news. While they were carving those ribs up, they heard over the, the broadcast here that the uh, judges took a liking to those chicken legs, and they were the only team that turned in chicken legs today, so they got an early indication that that's, they have some good scores. That's interesting, so, that's true. Yeah, they're yeah. hearing that information. We so. should be getting chicken scores here in just a little bit, so we'll see if they crack the top three this this time it's I already know you already know I already, already know. know yeah All right. I don't know we, we just off for a few minutes? I, I think we gotta we gotta get uh, get permission to talk about uh, it I think but we're gonna cut to commercial break here first and then when we come back we will check out the top three in our chicken category and then we'll see how the judge ribbing comes. who's Ju gonna get the this judge ribbing or the rib judging comes <laughs> along ribbing. we'll be right back your head on low No place at high 
you'd rather be than when you're here beside me. Oh, take me there. Dry-aged beef has been around forever. We consider it a purifying process. It's really unique. It's incredible. It's a very, very subtle age flavor where you're taking a great piece of meat and you're enhancing it. It's the best dry age in the world. Dry-aged beef should be the purest, finest, safest product that you could possibly consume. It's a great eating experience. Chicken. Chicken. Pork. Pork. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go chicken now. Pork. Chicken. 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 Uh, pork. Chicken, baby. the leading distributor of shipping, industrial, and packaging materials to businesses throughout North America. Millions of customers trust Uline to be their partner for high quality, carefully sourced products. As a family owned and operated company with 6,000 employees and an outstanding reputation, we've made customer satisfaction our highest priority. The Uline Advantage is our commitment to always provide quality products, unparalleled customer service, and fast delivery to meet your needs. It all started in 1980 at a dining room table with one product, the H101 Carton Sizer. Today, we have over 34,000 quality products to help run your business. Need boxes? We have the largest inventory anywhere. Looking for pallet trucks or industrial shelving? We have thousands of material handling items to choose from. In stock at every location and ready to ship the same day. Customer service is the heartbeat of our company. A live representative is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Place an order or ask a product question. Our knowledgeable customer service representatives are always available in English, Spanish, or French. There are no automated messages and no buttons to push. You are always directly connected. Browse our catalog and place your order on the phone or online. Our user-friendly website and mobile site let you order anytime from anywhere. 
We have 13 million square feet of distribution centers strategically positioned throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. All orders placed by 6 p.m. are shipped same day from one of our 11 locations closest to you to guarantee fast delivery and shipping savings. Get exactly what you need when you need it. We want to be your long-term partner and exceed your expectations every day. Quality products, unparalleled customer service, fast delivery. Come experience the Uline Advantage today. We're back. We're back, and we are. We're, we have a mole. Somebody is telling the teams already who's winning the chicken, and I we just can't figure this out. Yeah. So we we got some investigating we're to gonna, do. But we're gonna look into that. We just got the chicken results ourselves here, but somehow those ch teams out there are, are rattling through who our top three yeah, is. Yeah. So Me Megan's got the number I, one chicken first place chicken trophy right here, yeah, which we're about to tell you the results were. Sponsored by Bricktown Brewery. So thank you, Bricktown Brewery, for um, here at Blues. Brews and BBQ. So we've got the results for chicken, and in third place, who do we got? Fergalicious Barbecue. Congratulations, Fergalicious. Uh oh, watch out. Uh, uh, I hear him celebrating down there. I they, know. That's well, speakers right next to him. They know exactly what we're saying. Yeah, and that's one leg up on uh, old, old uh, Sugar Fire, yeah, right? The cash. The, the cash. The side bet. Okay, second place, we have one, two, BBQ, congratulations, congratulations Steve. Steve. You came all the way here from Illinois. Yeah. Picking up a second place chicken. And who's going to be in first place? And in first place, chicken category, Shake and Bake Barbecue, the grand champion from our last event. He's in the lead now as we head into the rib category. I think the judging's going on right now, or at least maybe even finishing up. So we should have scores there in just a few minutes. But while that's finishing up, we're going to head down and take a live look here. We're going to pop in yep. with the Smokin' Hills and the Brew Hog Barbecue team and see how their pork boxes get built. So we'll, we're going to head on down there right now and uh, bring you guys along with us. I don't, are we going to deliver the trophy too? Nah, leave it there. Oh, we're going to leave the trophy here. Hills. The hills. We head on we're down to the hills. Found our mole. Can we interview you guys? Heck yeah! Are we on? Are we live? Is this thing live? Is this thing live? So I've got Cheryl and Lauren here from the Smokin' Hills. We're so excited to have you guys at today's competition here at Blues Brews and BBQ. You've had two turn-ins already. Chicken. We know the results. Ribs. You don't know the results yet. Well, you don't know your results. So we just, are you ready to hear? So we just announced third place was Fergalicious Barbecue on Chicken. Second place, 1-2 BBQ. And first place, Shake and Bake Barbecue on that dang chicken. That's him, tallest man. So so we don't. what we don't know is, and what's a little bit of twist, is we're not saying who took fourth through 10th, um, just to keep that suspense going a little bit. I'm calling fourth. How did you feel about your chicken? I thought it was really good. I was really happy with it, so yeah. Uh, was there anything different for here than you normally do, or did you just cook your chicken? We just cooked it the way we normally do, and it, it was really good. I mean, it just tasted good. Okay. How about those ribs? What would you think about your ribs? I thought they were really good, too. So let's hope we get in that top three on ribs. Well, we'll, we'll hear the results here pretty soon, what we're doing on the ribs. Um, and you guys are getting ready for pork. You look awful relaxed here. What's going on? Well, we, we got another five minutes before we're ready to rock and roll for the pork box. So so these guys not only have their barbecue timed, but they have their breaks timed. So you know when you can sit down and relax and, and take it take it easy a little bit. I mean, it's only like 120 or 140 right now. So we got plenty of time. 
Oh, I guess it's 12.40 right now. You're good. Okay, well, I think we got Jason's going to pop over here with the uh, Bruise Hog crew and watch what they're doing for their turn in. We ready to take it over there? All right, head on over, guys. We're going to see what Jason's up to. All right, I'm here with the Brew Hogs. They're getting their pork ready right now. So what, what we got Nate doing, this is the fat cap side of the pork butt. And there's a layer of meat that sits between the, the fat cap and the rest of the butt. It's sometimes referred to as the false cap. The teams also call this the bacon because it's this stringy meat that just cooks inside of fat. So he's trying to separate the bacon. It's not actually bacon, but it, it's some, just a name that barbecue teams have given this little area of the pork butt. He's trying to separate out the fat here, and what he's going to do is use this as part of his pulled. Over there, Keith has got a pile of it from from one of the other butts. How many butts were you cooking? Was uh, it four? Four, butts four. He had four four butts, so he's got a decent amount of this meat to work through. Um, and they're going to pull this together with some of the other areas of the pork butt to, to make their pull. Yeah, we're going to use the, the tube muscles uh, from, that are just sitting right behind the money muscle. So we're going to we're going to use that for to go along with this bacon. So those tube muscles sit, they, what the money muscle hangs off the edge of the butt, the tubes sit right behind that money muscle. They're also completely surrounded in fat. Are you leaving them surrounded or did you cut, did you carve them out to, to get a little bark on the tubes? Yeah, I, I got them uh, a little exposed so I could get some rub on them and stuff, uh, but but not totally exposed. All right, this is, this is looking really good, nice and tender. He's got some au jus in these pans here. They'd separated, before we cut in here, I was watching, they'd separated the au jus, so there's a pan sitting right over here by the pulled. They've got some barbecue sauce yeah, that they're gonna mix in with. We took half of that au jus and uh, put the money mussels in a half pan yeah. and put those back on the smoker to keep those warm while we got this uh, pulled prep. So the, so the money mussels are, are on the, the pit right now, staying warm. Ultimately what these guys are shooting for is a row of slices and a big old pile of succulent, juicy pulled pork. He's getting into the tubes right now, so you can see this section here. He can tell he's, he's been in and out of pork, but a whole lot. He knows exactly what the muscles he's, he's trying to get after here. Look at that. Nice and tender. How's the flavor? Not bad. Not bad, Not bad he says. Is he going to do any adjustments to this as you're making the box? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hit it up with a little bit of salt at the end. It's just uh, a few of the spices we used on the outside. We uh, uh, put them in a spice grinder and really dusted them up, and we'll sprinkle that over the top, and that'll kind of blend in and give it a little bit of color at the end, too. Excellent, excellent. Well, you guys keep working here. I'm going to talk at folks through what you're doing while you're getting your boxes built because we've got still a little bit of time. It's 42, so we've got up until 55 for them to get their boxes created. So they got a little little bit of time here. Is, is, is this going to go back on the pit? Are you guys going to put this pulled back on the pit as well? Yeah, we like to call it the pork bomb. We uh, put a foil bomb and we just kind of tie it up. It looks like a little bomb. So nice, nice. Keep that warm until we, we uh, slice up our money muscles, and then we'll bring that pork bomb back out and add it to the box. Excellent, excellent. These guys cook on gateway drum smokers back here, and they were telling me that uh, earlier that Nate is the one that actually got Mr. Tim Shear involved with can cooking uh, many years ago. So. I would say I was one of, one of the guys. I would say Jeff Brinker is the ultimate guy, but, yeah, I, uh, Jeff Brinker and I cooked together for a little bit, and, uh, yeah, drums have been uh, been around for a while. We love them. One of, the, one of the godfathers of the Insane Can Posse right here. So they added some of the barbecue sauce. They poured in a little of that juice, a little of the finishing powder there to put some salt content, a little bit more of that rub flavor, and this is that pork bomb he was talking about. They're going to wrap that up. It's over to the gateway drum there, and he's dropping it back on. Are the money muscles on that same one? Yeah, they're on that same one. Looks like, oh, Keith's grabbing his gloves. So let's see if I can go over there. All right. All right, we're going to go check in with, with Megan in the Smoking Hills right now, and then we'll come back and check on you guys here in a second. Megan, take it away. Okay, guys, we are back over here with Lauren and Cheryl Hill from the Smoking Hills, and I watched Lauren reach in and delicately pull out a couple of money muscles. So that indicates to me, looks like they're cooking two pork butts. And they use an electric knife. They've got a generator out here, because we're old school. We are not in trailers. We are in pop-up tents. Um, there is awesome crowds that are, you know, onlookers, lots of good noise, lots of distractions. It's no hiding in a trailer. They are in the middle of it all. He's got an electric knife that he was cutting some medallions off of that 
Money Muscle, and it looks like Cheryl's picking out some pieces that I'm assuming they're gonna do some fold and some medallion on the Money Muscle. I'm gonna see if I can pop in here and find out what she's doing. Hey, Miss Cheryl, tell me, or is this something you're gonna turn in? Is this a part? Do you mind telling us what part it is? This is, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm pulling some, some stuff that'll make good pulled pork. The best part I'm gonna get from this fat cap right here, because as we dig through that, there's gonna be strands down in there. I like to call it the candy of the pork butt. And you can start to see them coming up here, but I'm gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna pull it into strands and that's what we're gonna turn in as pulled in the box. Lauren's gonna do the, the money muscle cuts or chunks there, but this is, this right here is what I'm after is this. That's beautiful right in there. And it's very, it looks pretty moist, yep. right? Hey, for those of you that are playing along in a drinking game, I think I just said a key word for you. <laughs> I'll say it again, drink up buttercup, moist. So we've got medallions going here with Lauren. You're cutting those off. Two pork butts, did I get that right? Is that what you're cooking? Yeah, we had two pork butts today. Um, and so he'll use money muscle off of both of them. We'll either slice one and chunk one or turn in all slices and then fold. Have you ever just turned in money muscle? No. They always get the good stuff, so that's fantastic. And how are you feeling on time? Are you okay? I think we're doing okay. I don't even know what time it is. Am I bothering you? <laughs> okay, okay, quarter till, all right. We're gonna kick it back over to Jason. Jason's hanging out with the Brew Hogs, see where they're at. All right, thanks guys. All right, we're back here with the Brew Hogs. They're getting their money muscle out right now. This was in that pit right next to that pork bomb that they just dropped in. So they tidied up the station a little bit, get ready to start boxing, pulling these money muscles out. It looks like he's cutting off some fat here. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he cooked. cutting off a little bit of that fat right there. It was right next to that tube muscle. So he's got four money muscles, so each pork butt has a, only one money muscle. So they had to cook four pork shoulders to get all of this this area of the uh, the pork shoulder identified and isolated. And so, it looks like you're gonna you're gonna be lining these up, cutting these into medallion, probably trying to match them for size. How many how many medallions are you looking to get in your turning box? Uh, yeah, I have to turn in uh, at least six, so each judge gets a piece, but I also like to give the table captain one, so I try to get an odd number, seven in there. So we're shooting for at least seven. Look, lining them up for size right now. Eight. So he's going to cut the ends off so that they're not going to give the judges any of those end pieces. They can also feel how tender it is. He said he can, that's how he can tell how tender it is. So that's going to give him an, an indication of of the doneness and, and which which areas will get sent to the judge. And you see that money muscle looks almost like a tenderloin. It's a, it's one of the muscles that hangs off the edge of the pork shoulder, the opposite edge of the bone. It's you can typically tell it because it's got all sorts of fat striations. We'll we'll get you in on a uh, a raw one here at some point so you can see what that looks like. And see he's matching it up. So what he's doing from an appearance perspective, he wants these guys to look uniform as they lay in the box. So he's trying to see if he can get them to look like they all came from the same pork shoulder. He's not using these end pieces because there's extra bark around the edge. That can get a little dry, a little more overcooked than the, than the middle pieces. So they're focusing really in on the center of that money muscle. Looks like we're gonna maybe a, you're gonna go for about a quarter to half inch thick. Uh, I'm going to do, actually I decided I'm going to do two different kinds of slices. Uh, this one was a little bit tighter, so I feel I can go a little bit thinner slice and give them a bunch of thin slices. And then this one, is, uh, these are nice and tender. I'll, I'll do those a little bit thicker. So this is an audible on the fly. Right. Excellent. So that's going to now give them three meats when you've got your pork, or three different preparations of, of pork going into this turn-in box. So you've got some nice, what I call more traditional style money muscle. We're going to have some thin sliced money muscle. And then the, the pork bomb that's in there has got their pulled pork. We're just going through, sizing it up. He wants, he just wants them to all be the same size. And that's for mostly for appearance sake was in the box. There's your seven. I got a, there's an extra little chunk off the edge here. You mind if I sample a piece? Let's see what let's see what this tastes like that they're going. Mm. You do. Mm. You can taste the smoke. So they're cooking on cans, so it's got a bit of charry flavor to it. Oh yeah, that's got so that's the in the finishing sauce. Mm. 
that money muscle just melts. It is so tender. You can tell the bark has a, a almost a char on it, but not too strong. But just enough that you can tell that that's, that's got a good barbecue flavor. It adds some texture to it too. So you got a, that firm bark on the outside and then the, the money muscle just melts inside. Oh, that was delicious. So it had a, had a, a sweet glazed sauce on it. He said he's gonna be putting a little bit more salt on it because he wants the up the salt content. So he just laid them all out flat. That looks like powdered, whatever your rub was, powdered up. And so what that does is gonna allow that seasoning to soak down in. If you just went just straight, straight rub right out of the canister, you might end up with some large granules or flakes of pepper or something. So he's run this through like a spice grinder or a coffee mill to get it at a, a real fine texture. And what that does is that, that rub just melts right into the meat and disappears and just gives the, the salt flavor and and a, a little little extra rub boost. All right, so they're lining that up. They've got paper towels lining their turn-in box, and that's acting as a, a protective layer. You see their gloves are kind of touching those spots. If they didn't have those paper towels there, that'd be smearing all over their turn-in box. They'd have to come back and clean it. So this, this helps them stay nice and organized. So they've got their money muscle in. Keith's over at the can. He just grabbed the pork bomb off the pit. Remember, that's the mixture of the bacon and the tubes. And they've had some au jus from the, the wrapping, the foil wraps, mixed with some of their sweet barbecue sauce glaze that they're putting over the top of it. And they put that back on the pit to keep warm while they were going through this process of slicing the money muscle. All right, he's going to go back to the... Uh, Back to the other one, the other money muscle gets thin slices. Is that the same sauce as you mixture that you put inside with the uh, the pork bomb? Uh, yeah. yeah, same same exact mixture. He just dunked that in. And what he's doing now is giving that same muscle, that same money muscle. It's just a different preparation. And this is just showing the judges that you know exactly what you're doing as a as a barbecue cook. You can execute with a high degree of accuracy and precision and have multiple presentations or preparations inside the same turn-in box. You're just wanting to demonstrate your barbecue expertise as much as possible. But the key there, though, is that you, you still think it's perfect. If that, if that had any issues or was even, even tighter, would you have just left it out altogether? Yeah. Yeah, he said he, he could tell right when he sliced it, he knew it was going in. It just needed a different level of thickness on, on the slices itself. Hitting it again with that, that finishing powder. It's thinner, so I don't want to get a lot of that salt on the face of that, so I just put it on the outside. So that salt would go a lot further is what you're saying. Right. On a thinner slice, there's not that nice inner meat to help balance out the salt content. So we have the money muscle running straight across the front of the box. We've got the thin slice money muscle now on the back left corner that he's stacking from front to back. That's a good looking pork box. And it's one, two, three, four, that's seven slices. Beautiful. That's me? All right, I better get in and see how this is. Somebody's got to give you feedback, right? Right. Mm. Look at the nice tender bite there. It does have a little bit more texture on it compared to the money muscle. That The money muscle chunk just melted all the way through. This has got almost more like it, you would think, from a pork tenderloin. Still really, really tender, but juicy and, and flavorful. That's very nice. Got the bark flavor on the outside. You can tell it's got that charred can texture on the on the bark as well. And so this, no, you, you do your thing. This is all that pulled pork that they were working from the from the bacon and the tubes. It was they they put it with some au jus barbecue sauce. That's what they called the pork bomb. It went back on the pit while the rest of this was sitting, or while they were building the uh, the money muscles in. So this should be the goal of that is to keep this nice and hot. But it should be a, a big pile of warm, juicy pulled pork that they're trying to get into the hands of the judges. They're using a kebab skewer to get in there and try and style that pile a little bit. <laughs> there's little tiny, it's just pulled pork, so sometimes there's little meat fibers that kind of stick up. He called them hairs. It's not actually a hair, it's meat itself. He's tucking in to make this look nice and pretty. Appearance is just as much a part of competition barbecue. Even though it's weighted a little less, you can uh, a contest can be won or lost by a single appearance point. So these guys are all about 
making sure they get as many points as possible from those judges. That's why they're playing this glaze back as well. Not only does it add flavor, but these sweet glazes give the appearance of moisture. This is gonna sit probably another 10, 15 minutes as it makes its way through the appearance process and into the judging booth. That glaze is gonna sit up on top of all this meat and give the judges that nice appearance of, of juicy, flavorful pulled pork. The judges are gonna eat with their eyes first. They're trying to make them excited for that food that's gonna come across their plate. Oh, looks good. Any final touches there? Gonna take off the paper towels that were guarding the edges. Any other final touch-ups? He's, he's got a little bit of juice there. That's a you gotta go. All right, we're coming up on the turn-in window right now. 12.55 just went. Boom. And he's gone. That's it. All right, we're coming back up to you, Megan. We're live. Hey, guess what? I've got Michelle Higgins here with the bar with the Ozark Barbecue Alliance. She is all thing food, putting this on. Tell us quickly about this event and then what you have coming up next. We've got some exciting things coming up next. And actually, this event is the Brews, Blues, and Barbecue. We are doing this for the Perspectives Preparatory Academy. Great day today. Awesome weather, right? Totally perfect, except a little bit of extra wind, but that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I'm not that out there cooking. I don't have to worry about it. Um, we are with the National Barbecue Alliance, and I'm just loving the National Barbecue League, what we're doing here. This is our first time having this in Springfield, and uh, my first event with them, but I've been working with these guys for 15 years. So love them all. They're all great. What a great way to get back to this charity. Cannot talk about it enough. So our next event with the National Barbecue League is coming up in October, and just an hour east of here, up the road, in Lebanon, Missouri, we are doing a National Barbecue League event and a barbecue competition, same day, giving away $10,000. So if you are a team and you're out there and you want to come and compete, October 4th and 5th, do not miss it. National Barbecue League on Friday night and the regular competition on Saturday. So, and if you need anything about barbecue, get on our website too. We're tagging along with the National Barbecue League. It's the Ozarks Barbecue Alliance. We've got six competitions this year alone. So we're all working with these teams, and a lot of these teams out here will be competing at those events as well. So what a wonderful event today. Thank you so much for coming out here, guys. Great. Thank you, Michelle. And again, the Ozarks Barbecue Alliance coming up, Lebanon. We will be there live to give some more results. And speaking of results, you've got folks turning in. So this is pork time. Pork. Yes. And pork is coming in. We've got ribs, though. I've got, I've got, yeah, I've got the announcement. I've got the winners. Are you guys ready? I hopefully everybody out in uh, the land can hear me. I'm gonna walk over. So, and let the pork come in. Yeah. You do this, girl. You've got, you've got a lot of, you got a lot of boxes starting to roll in. So, I want to give the results for the ribs. I hope I have permission to do this because I'm just gonna do it. So, in third place, congratulations. One, two, barbecue, you have done it again. You have done it again, one, two, barbecue. Second place, Dirt Road Barbecue, congratulations. Those ribs did awesome. And first place, hey, Jess, Jason, uh, guess what? Team you followed, Boomerang Barbecue, first place in ribs, congratulations. You don't even, these people are like, I don't even know who won, so congratulations. And are we gonna throw it back out there? Or are, we, are we throwing back or are we staying live in here? Are we staying live in here? Are we live? All right, we're gonna throw back to Jason. Congratulations again, One Two Barbecue, Dirt Road, and Boomerang Barbecue. All right, that's the end of the rib category. We have the pork boxes are in with the judges right now, so we're gonna come back in just a few minutes. We'll take a sneak peek at what the judges are doing, and then we'll get the pork results out and check in with our teams as they start getting their brisket boxes ready. We'll be back, we're gonna take a few, uh, quick commercial break. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the National Barbecue League at Brews, Blues, and Barbecue. Barbecue, it's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life and the fire is growing. 
there's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pitmasters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Woo! Oh, it feels good. That's why Smithfield Fresh Pork is proud to partner with some of the top pit masters in the country. These guys don't just smoke the competition, they kick some serious pork butts. These leading pit masters have made a name for themselves as experts and helped drive authentic awareness for Smithfield Fresh Pork to their large audience of followers. The real truth is Smithfield is the best pork and ribs I can cook. Smithfield, the passion they're putting back into barbecue, it's really exciting times in competition barbecue. Because it's more than just flavor that hails from Smithfield, it's world-class championship barbecue. Everyone knows the road to being king of the smoker starts with Smithfield. <laughs> Barbecue. It's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life. And the fire is growing. There's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pit masters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Championship pitmasters agree. There's nothing like being pitted against other world-class pitmasters to flame their competitive fire. Barbecue is just a passion. It gets in your blood. Barbecue, it sucked me in in such a major way. And what hooks me on cooking is the creative process, the immersion in details. You know, where there's smoke, there's camaraderie. The barbecue circuit's great. Family, fun. Yeah. You meet the, the most amazing people in the world. Kind of like a big tailgate, but it's all really about family and all our friends from around the country. I love cooking, I love making people happy, and I love to prove that I have the best barbecue. And for 2019, Smithfield is bringing barbecue's best together in one smoking hot competition, unifying teams from all over the country and across the major barbecue sanctioning bodies. We're igniting the spark for the ultimate contest, the Smokin' with Smithfield National Barbecue championship. Smithfield has developed a year-long barbecue points chase, counting pitmaster scores from barbecue competitions across the country. Teams can track their progress on our leaderboard on smokingwithsmithfield.com. The top 24 teams in the points chase will battle through a three-round playoff in New Orleans, November 14th through the 17th. The National Barbecue Championship is sizzling with opportunities for sponsors to surprise and delight cook teams with cool swag and prizes and interact with top pitmasters and customers through VIP events. Pitmasters have a chance at over $50,000 in cash. Also at stake, the biggest bragging rights is the unified National Barbecue Champion. The great thing about this contest, it unites barbecue. It incorporates all of the major sanctioning bodies to determine the true champion. It's been a great thing for barbecue as a sport and for the Smithfield brand. Everybody out here is competitive. We just come here, we have a great time, and I hope we hear our name called. I think it's going to change the way a lot of teams look at competition barbecue. From the backyard to the competition circuit and the road to the Big Easy, Smithfield is changing the face of barbecue. The Smokin' with Smithfield National Barbecue Championship is igniting the flame of competition barbecue. I'm excited because Smithfield's bringing this great opportunity to find out who is the best cooker in the country. You know what's gonna be fun? Going head to head against my brothers from Texas. Hey, Big Papa, I hope to see you in New Orleans for the Smithfield National Barbecue Championship. See you in New Orleans, yeah! <laughs> Thank you.
I mean it's a great cooker to have on your driveway or on your patio because you can get home from work, say, 5 o'clock, light the cooker, rub your ribs, put your ribs on, and you're eating by 7.30. Most, most cookers, it'll take four hours or more to cook ribs. Gateway drum consistently, two hours, done. So, I mean, you can't ask for anything better. Welcome back. We're the National Barbecue League here at Brews, Blues, and Barbecue in Springfield, Missouri. This is the second event on the National Barbecue Tour this year. We just got the results in from the rib category. You want to recap? Yeah, sure. Recapping, we had some excellent ribs turned in. Those judges were nothing but smiles. It was really fun in there. There was a community bin of rejects that they were loving and everybody was fighting over. So you know that's good. Yeah, so, so we saw some of those teams, they put more than six box, six bones in there. Specifically Boomerang, they had 10 going in. Those extra ones go what's called the grazing table inside the <laughs> judging room. So all the volunteers, everybody that helps out to make sure these events run smoothly, get some good competition barbecue. And what's really neat about this event as well is you've got just folks that came out to see what in the world goes on with a <laughs> professional circuit competition. Yep. And so there are people kind of milling around, watching, seeing what's going on. And they get to go inside the booth of, of where the judges are too. So there, yep. I think a couple of them were, were checking out what was what was being eaten. So recap, who won? Yeah, I think who we won? see a little bit of a trend emerging here. So let's take a look back at the chicken category. Yeah. Okay, so in chicken in third place, Fergalicious came in third on the chicken as a recap. Second place was 1-2 BBQ, and first place in that chicken category was Shake and Bake. Yeah, our grand champion from our last yeah. event coming out strong, strong in the chicken category. Ribs, ribs. So we have coming up again our first two-category call. A call is when you get an award. Your name is called out. 1-2 barbecue was third place. So that, that appears to be our front runner right now. Yeah. And then, but we don't know what those fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, you know. That's right. We don't know who those are. So sometimes consistency can, can creep you up there. Who was, who was second place? Second place was Dirt Road Barbecue. And, that, and is, they uh, were our reserve grand champion last yeah, time. Yeah, they won ribs last time, and they got second place in ribs this, this week. So they're still in it. They're still in it. And first place overall, we got to see these guys put together their, their rib box. Boomerang Barbecue out of Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock, is that right? Oh, Texas. Man. They're out of Texas. They're out of Texas. I believe it's Lubbock. Yeah, yeah and I tasted look. those. Look, there look, it is. Look yeah, there we got. Yeah, that's look fancy. Look at that graphic. That is super fancy. I tasted those ribs, and holy smokes, were they good. So, I see why those are winning ribs. So you talked about the fact they flew through them with that electric knife. Yeah, I've, I don't think I've ever seen anybody slice ribs as fast as Matt Walker with that electric knife. He was just like, zzz, 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 zzz. he had four slabs sliced in no time and, and had them all stacked back up and back on the pit before we knew what to do. We had some extra time to fill because he was so fast. He was fast. And so we also are, you know, we watched people starting to turn in those mm -hmm. pork boxes. Yep. Any, anything exciting you saw with the pork? Well, we saw from the, the uh, brew hogs, they went into their pork box building thinking they were going to do a money muscle slice, eight money muscles, and, well, eight money muscle slices and a nice pile of pork. And they ended up having one money muscle that was a little tighter than the rest. So they still stuck with eight of the normal quarter and a half inch medallions, but they opted to do a third preparation. So they had a, another nice big wide chunk of money muscle that they thinly sliced, almost like a deli pork, and they shingled that up against their uh, their other money muscle. So they ended up sending three different preparations. That was totally on the fly, just based on the product came out today. So we'll see what the judges thought. I thought it was a nice snack. We'll, we'll see yeah. how the judges. All right, looks like we've got Mr. Fergalicious down here. All right, let's head on down. The teams now are working on their briskets. So we're going to check in with Fergalicious Barbecue as well as our potential front runner, Steve Hayden with 1-2 Barbecue. Man, Steve, I'm coming at you, buddy. You get ready. What do we got going on over here with Fergolicious Barbecue? Is that burn ins? Yep. Giving out burn ins. How's it coming along? Ask these guys. Well, they got happy, happy, smiling faces back here. So in competition barbecue, you have to score it from a one to a nine. One being disqualification, nine being perfect score. What are we thinking back here? Tens? We got tens from the crowd. The people's champion. I love it. Hey, I got to point out here. This is Fergalicious Barbecue, and you've got some lady lumps, lady humps down here it's running right humps. there. There's a speed bump in the parking lot. It's my lovely lady. Th this is bump. nice. It's going to bring me up. I'm a, I might be a little on the short side. It's going to bring me up to your height here. Not, not that you're overly tall, but. 
I'm not the tallest. I didn't have to stand on a cooler like when we were talking to Tim. <laughs> All right, so we are coming down what the home stretch here with your brisket. What we are, are we? You waiting for it to come off the pit? Yeah, we, we're just on the on the smoker right now, setting the sauce, setting the sauce on the burn ends, and. Uh, uh, Josh will run down here and get this here in about five, seven minutes, and we'll start slicing up. Excellent. So you guys cook on a Myron Mixon, right? Yes. Myron Mixon gravity-fed smoker. So the way that works is there's a big chute that comes up and down the side of the, the pit. He's got to fill it up with royal oak charcoal. And what kind of wood? Uh, we use Vaughn wood products, and we use pecan and cherry. Yeah. Pecan yep. and cherry, do you, yep. are you blending them together? Or are you adding them on at different times? How are you running the different kinds of wood? Uh, it's about a 90-10, about 90% pecan and 10% cherry, just, just to give a little hint of color and flavor. Yeah, just kick it up a little. Kick it up a little a sweetness. Bit. Yeah. All right. So what, what's the t how much we got before your uh, your brisket comes out? Uh, probably. I don't know what time is it. All right. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna head on over and check in with Steve Hayden. Uh, he's he might be just be our front runner right now. He's had two calls in the first two categories. So heading on over to Megan. All right, Steve Hayden. Congratulations. Two calls. Have you done an event with the National Barbecue League before? I have not. I'm a second stringer, so this is my first event. We got giggles in the audience, second stringer, and he's coming in and doing some damage. So you have two calls right now. We're only announcing the top three. You've got a chicken call, and you've got a ribs call. How did you feel about your pork? As long as they like cold pork, I'll be all right. <laughs> Tell me why. What do you mean by cold pork? What, what, is that your strategy? We usually hold up in our trailers and out here in the elements. And cooking by myself, I don't have somebody to shut the lid. So it was exposed. So tenderness and taste and everything will be fine as long as they don't like it. Or, you know, they don't mind it being a little bit, a little bit chilly. Well, and usually, I mean, that's the case in judging is that you really try not to judge on temperature because it's really taste tenderness appearance you're really hoping to go for that so we hope hope that didn't strike against you um what are you normally in if you're not in a pop-up tent what's your rig uh just a trailer with a porch on it where the cooker's on the porch so you never have to be in the elements if you don't want to Who, who's normally with you um mike gillespie is with me sometimes um sometimes my family most times mike's but uh every once in a while i end up cooking by myself like today and you've got, we've got a window of time before you start working on your brisket. Tell us about that. How's that cook going? What's, what's, what you got going in your mind? Brisket's good. It's just resting. I like to give myself about seven minutes to get it out, slice it, do what I need to do to it, get it in the box, and get it to the judge as soon as possible. Uh, try to, trying to keep it warm, basically. So I don't want to slice it too soon where it's just sitting, sitting in the box, sitting on cold garnish. So just trying to wait 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 till that last minute without pushing it too far do you have anyone here that you are just gunning for is there anyone who put you on the spot who do you um, want to beat you know i'd like to beat brad 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 took it to me pretty hard last year he took it to everybody um i'd like to beat the tallest man in barbecue uh, yeah, all of them all i like them. He's, he's all of them but specifically you tim you beefy jesus he wants to take you down. Okay, so I heard a little story about you and cooking with broken ribs and a spine that was broken. Crushed what spine. crushed spine? What in the world? When was that? And are you okay? Yeah, that that would have been three seasons ago, and something about being tough or dumb going together. <laughs> All good. You're still a winner. You're a champion. We've got um, again, just as a reminder, Steve here. 2017 American Royal Pork Champion, so we're hoping to hear if that may be uh, perfect, perfect that year. And then you were the American Royal Invitational Reserve Grand Champion, and that same year you won the King Smokers Reserve Grand Champion. Yep, that was a very good year last year, good fall, so hopefully we can get a good pork score here, find out here in a few minutes, and uh, know where we sit. All right, I like that. Um, what is it that you think you do different with your brisket that's going to help you stand out? Um, it's simple. It's, uh, some might call it safe. You know, you're going to get the beef taste. Very light sweet on it. Very light salt on it. Um, if I have a good first three categories, I don't want to offend a judge with that last turn in. I don't have to go for it all on brisket. So today I'm going to play it pretty safe since I got some nice calls already. Will you turn in burnt ends? Uh, no. No, I, don't, I didn't even cook them. He didn't even cook burnt ends. So that's really fascinating. Are we ready to see what Fergalicious is doing? Um, we, I know you've got a few more minutes. I mean, like, we're down to seconds before you've got your window of time. So we're going to head on down to Boomerang. 
Jason's going to follow up with those winner winner uh, rib dinner guys. So thanks, Steve. Thank Good luck. You. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. I'm here with Boomerang Barbecue. We just found out you guys won the rib category here. They were pretty good. They were delicious. I, I got my seal of approval. <laughs> so from now on, since I tasted the winning ribs, anytime we're at a contest together, I'm going to need you to bring ribs to me to and, taste. And, and that's going to be your good luck charm from now on. Hand feed me a rib. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, we heard here over the, the loudspeaker when we were doing ribs that the judges liked your chicken. They commented on how yeah. good those chicken legs were, and you were looking pretty happy. They didn't quite crack the top three, but he could have been fourth. So his. How's that make you feel going into the pork category, knowing you've got first place in ribs and possibly a top chicken ranking? I feel okay, but you know, with these guys, it's a tough crowd. Yeah. So yeah, you, everybody's never, you, you have to have four meats to win. Yeah. Absolutely, and everybody here, the, all these guys that are cooking, all these teams, they're either state, national, or world champions. There's no bad barbecue team here. No. This, is, this is the best of the best. So even coming in 10th place is still, you know, still yeah. good. Yeah, Still good. You're here. Great. You're here. It's, it's not great. But. I was eighth place ribs at the last National Barbecue League. Well, then this is redemption for redemption. you. This is redemption for you. <laughs> so we're, we're, we are right now in the time when the briskets are all on the pits. Every team is waiting to pull that off and begin their finishing process. So there's, do you have yours unwrapped? Is it back in the pit yet? Do you have it holding in your cambro over here? What's, what's going on? We're back on the can. No, it's on, the, it's on the can. So you're putting a little more heat back onto it. Are you trying to tighten it up? Is it, yeah. is it wrapped? Nah, we're just... Uh, Getting the top right. So it's, it's unwrapped. Yes. It's unwrapped. All right. So maybe coat, bring in a little smoke, right? Some of that might have steamed out before. So we right. saw saw you guys doing that with your ribs earlier. Right. Are you gonna pull that back out and sauce it, and then put it back on, similar to what you did with your ribs? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Now, are you gonna be doing anything different with your turn-in boxes? We saw you making for uh, for your ribs that you had a uh, sit. It was kale, nice kale bed, real tight, low. That's it. Same thing here. We just just gonna be putting a different championship meat on top. That's right. All right. Hopefully. Excellent, excellent. Well, we are going to go check in with Sugar Fire now. I think they are pulling some meat off the pit, so we're going to take it over to Megan. Okay, we're here. We are with Mike Johnson in Sugar Fire Barbecue. First time you've ever cooked on drums, and, I mean, you're loving it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. I, I love it. But we'll see how I do. If I came in last place, it's probably because of the drum. You know? Yeah, I get it. I'm not trying to make excuses already, but my back hurts. And I, I got here late. I'm all alone. You know, I'm drunk. All alone. I'm drunk. He's, you know what? You are, and you are in a really tight personal competition with Richard. Yes. You want to beat him. You've got a $100 bet yes. going in. He's already got one call. We don't know the results yet on pork. You're getting ready to turn in, burn ins. Are you going to, oh, there's some taunting over there. I think they've already spent that money. Oh, you know they have. I heard something about lady lumps Gosh, over there. I took out a line of credit at Walmart. Hey, out. He's got, he's got a couple <laughs> things on layaway. layaway. He's got the, he just bought a couch on layaway. He's so confident. That's fantastic. Okay, so you said you are going to turn in burn ends. Is that I your Yeah, I think they're beautiful. Oh, have you already? Would you look at them for me? Okay, wait. What? He's already ready. No, I'm about to put Oh, you're about to put I thought, oh, my goodness. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you, well, I'll tell you what I think. So he's getting ready to turn in. And Mike, for those of you that are just now joining us, typically is out of the St. Louis area. He's a restaurateur. And, oh, he's, he's, he's cussing over here. No no, 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 no. Oh, those are beautiful. If you can want to get in on these um, beautiful, juicy burnt ends, those are looking real good. Yeah, I would. No, I really. Those are nice. I call it. They're like marshmallows, right? I would turn those in. That looks. Yeah, they're soft. Those look good. I, I'd turn them in. No, no. Just make sure they're not pooled. Just make sure it's not pooled. I think you're good. All right, Jason, we're going to turn it over to Jason. He's hanging out with Fergalicious Barbecue. It looks like they got some, some knife action happening over there. Yeah, I'm here with Fergalicious. They've got their brisket that's now off the pit. It was, they've got some sauce on top of it. And, and once again, we see somebody using an electric knife to get through all this championship meat. A nice smoke ring on there. So Megan was just talking with Mike Johnson. You guys still have a little bit of a bet going on. Uh, you feel you feeling confident that you're going to be taking home a hundred of his dollars today? I feel like I feel like we're in the lead. I feel like that's kind of a no-brainer, and Mike knows better, chef. So the longer I distract you and keep you from slicing your brisket, it might just up his chances of uh, catching you in the brisket category. <laughs> I can multitask. I can multitask. All right. So this is the flat. This is what you're getting your slices out of. We're going about 
the way, the way KCBS recommends and they teach their judges is you're looking for pencil width slices. And the tenderness there, he's draping it over his finger to gauge about how well the, that meat holds together. A slice should completely stay intact and hold its shape, but when you pull it, it pull apart with ease. And so some of these teams here, based on how each brisket's gonna cook a little different, the final temperature and the tenderness is gonna be a little different, will change the width of the meat and width of their slices to try and compensate if something's over or undercooked. Looks to me like this is a pretty spot on brisket. You're slicing dead money of where you I'm would typically it. be aiming. Yeah, I'm loving this right now. I gotta shorten up the edges a little bit because it's a little too long to fit in the box. As you can see right here, yeah. a little long, uh, which I, I like having the smoke right there, the smoke ring where they can see that, but I'm going to have to cut that off. So I'm going to go uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'll go about 12. 12 feet. slice box? Well, no, it won't be a 12 slice box, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting it set up to where I want my favorites. And the front side is where I'm going to get my, the ones that I really like from. But right, right now I'm just going to, I'm going to trim off these edges right here so that we can fit it in the box. All right. All right, we just have our pork results that came in, so we're gonna go check in with Megan while Richard's squaring up this brisket, and then we'll come back and see it get put in the final box. Megan. Yeah. Okay, guess what? I've got something in my hot little hand. I've got the results of pork. So, are you ready for this? Third place in pork. Congratulations. Fergalicious barbecue, third place in pork. Congratulations. Yeah, okay, we've got second place. Let's see who we got second. Um, shake and bake. Congratulations, shake and bake. All right, here we go. First place, we're gonna deliver the trophy right to you. You got this? First place in pork, let's head on down. Just teasing, it's this way. Follow me. Let's head on in to getting basted. Congratulations. That's right, got one right. We got took three categories. Michelle, congratulations. You got to hand getting basted first place in pork. Did you get to try any pork? I tried pork and I can guarantee you I tried his. It was awesome. Oh, guaranteed we tried yours. So congratulations. What do you think of your pork when you were going in? What, did you do something crazy? No, nah, I did my normal pork, man. We just won in Australia two weeks ago. Won the world championship last year, so we just run pork. I like it. What'd you put in there? Maple syrup. Yep. And love. <laughs> love, L-U-V or L-O-V-E? For you to rub on there. Well, congratulations, pork. That is fantastic. So just as a recap, third place was Fergalicious. That's two calls for them. We've got second place with Shake and Bake. That's two calls for them. And first place getting basted. You guys did great. One call, but is a big one, right? Is a big call. We don't know what those scores are, what they are. So that means we've got three teams that have two calls each. So we're we're having a lot of fun here. And and, and one category left, brisket, and everybody's getting ready to turn in their brisket. So we're gonna head it back to Fergie. Congratulations, guys, on your third place finish on, on that one. All right, these guys, they're boxing up their brisket right now. Also, let's not forget, when we're recapping those results, we got one, two barbecue over here that had two early calls, so they're still in it as well. It's anybody's game at this point. The brisket category is always the equalizer. The winners and the losers can emerge pretty quickly, and contests are typically won in the brisket category. Fergalicious here is looking pretty good on theirs. He's checking tenderness as he lifts those up. Right before you came back over here, he has some au jus that's in this little loaf pan. He was basting it across the top of these slices. Did you put any additional seasoning in there? Or is that on top? I didn't notice any, any finishing powder. Yes, I uh, put a little bit of um, one of our finishing rubs in there that's kind of a salt, pepper, garlic, just to give it a little bit more snap. Excellent. And that went into your au jus? That went into your au jus? Okay. And then that au jus was then basted over the top of these guys. Okay. Oh, bouncing around here. I think he's grabbing his uh, his point. So he's got his burn ends that were down in the camera. That's a hot holding box. I'm gonna take a little more au jus on top of those guys. Ooh, those look pretty. So you got, did you do any flavor adjustment on these earlier? Or nope, just ran our normal, just ran our normal brisket. 
It's got good color on it. That's, that's that little hint of redness. Do you think that, that's accentuated by that cherry wood? Just a little bit, yeah, just a hint of that. And he's going to line those burn ends right up at the front of the box. So when that, that the rep or the table captain inside the judging booth opens that box up, the first thing those judges are going to see are those nice, beautiful burn ends laid out right across the, the front of the box. Sometimes folks will call those the marshmallows of barbecue. It's a little extra, extra reward for the judges. Burn-ins aren't required to go into the turn-in box. You could do only burn-ins. You could do only slices. Most of our cooks here are going to be striving to do, to for sure get slices. Burn-ins can can sometimes turn out, sometimes not turn out. But majority of folks we've seen here, we're 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 shooting to to turn some sort of burn-in in today. We'll see what happens from the judging tent once all these boxes make their way in there to be tasted. Doing a little cleanup. He's got a skewer. That seems to be a common thing we've seen with a lot of the teams today, using a kebab skewer to do some final touch-up. These guys like to take a picture, then look at the picture to see if there's any final adjustments that need to be made. Sometimes you get your camera, you can see something different that you don't see in person. Oh, there's a little extra love, and the box is off. What do you think? How, how'd that go? Uh, I feel I feel pretty good about it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you cook as many times as we do every year, you just run the same profile every week and week out, and you just try to run it as consistent as possible, and it's all up to these guys, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. Guys. So you've got two calls right now, one of just a handful of teams. You feeling pretty good about, about what, what could happen here? Yes, but as you said, Jason, the brisket <laughs> is the equalizer, and at our last Big 12, the brisket cost me the GC, so hopefully it'll come home for me today. Historically, what's your best category? Brisket. Brisket? Yeah. So this could be all adding up to a Fergo win today. We'll see. All we'll right. See. Excellent. Well, th thank you very much. Good luck today. All right. And we're going to head back up to the thank booths. You. Okay, now I'm like, okay. We're live. We're live. Yes. Hey, guys. Us turned in oh. their brisket. You're, uh, okay, Fergalicious just got their brisket turned in. Murph. What'd you think? I think the slices are pretty good. Burn ends were off, so we went slices only. So we'll see. Pork was terrible, but I'll be surprised if we weren't last in pork. But I think I think the brisket was pretty good. So did you hear the results of pork? I did. So it sounds like it's a three horse race right now. So it doesn't sound like we're in it, but maybe we can. Maybe a brisket will pull us back in it. You never know. What do you, what'd you think of your turn-ins all today? I think they've been good. Yeah. Yeah. Pork was probably the, the least. But why? What was it about it that? Uh, so our slices that he cut on the one money muscle, he made them really thick. And I hadn't tasted it. So by the time I tasted it, thick was not the way to go on that money muscle. And it was the best money muscle. Dang it. So it was tight. It wasn't really tight, but it had like a really big fat vein through it. So when it was a thicker slice, it was not good. So unpleasant, is that what you would say? Okay. So you guys did have a call in ribs. What did you think? Like, were you surprised with that announcement, or you knew the ribs were good? Yeah. 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 And you, you guys do St. Louis. Yep. St. Louis. Cut. Um, chicken. What was your thoughts on your chicken? I actually thought our chicken was better this week than we've done any time this year, so I think we're headed in the right direction on chicken. We've been struggling in chicken. We've been, what, what about it? Whatever. We like it. The judges haven't been liking it, so <laughs> we don't know. Hey, if you got a tip, we'll take it. Interesting. I'll tell you one of the things I, I will say when I had an opportunity to go in and watch what they were doing in the judging for the chicken, they the complex flavor of going from sweet to heat, they could not stop talking about that. After everything was done and they were kind of gossiping, you know, about what was going on, you could hear them talking about that one that went from kind, you know, a sweet to a nice heat. They were all talking about that. So, and they seemed to score it very well. Just a little hint for you. You might want to watch the footage back and uh, take a look at that and see if it's something you can pull off. So, all right, we're going to go back to Jason. Thank you so much and good luck. You guys might be some sneak wins in there. All right, I'm back here in the booth. I snagged a slice of Fergalicious brisket coming out of that last shot. So we are going to take a commercial break. All these brisket boxes are heading into the judging tent. We'll get a live look at what the judges think, and then we'll recap all of our results coming up next after our commercial break. Mm, look at this. Perfect. <laughs> My 
my team name is pretty funny because uh, a friend of mine, we used to do construction on the side nights and evenings, and we were up on Barn Road putting steel on, and uh, somehow he asked my name, McLawn, he says, are you are you Irish? I said, well, yeah, there's Irish in my family. He goes, you're the biggest damn leprechaun I ever seen. And then he says, I'm going to call you Lucky. And he says, from then on, it just stuck. Uh, we started out with barbecue. Our first team name was Pit Crew Barbecue. I was watching NASCAR a lot. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to do something. But it was just kind of boring to us. One day I'm sitting on the couch watching Talladega Nights movie. He's banging around in the kitchen doing dishes or something. And I turn around and holler, shake him, mate. He's like, that's our new team name. I was like, what? He's like, we're changing our team name to Shake and Bake Barbecue. I was like, oh, we just got all new shirts with Pit Crew. I was like, whatever. Yeah, she didn't care. We only yeah. did like two or three a year at the time. And at the time, there was like, Another pit crew had come, like started using that name, and then we were the first shake and bake too. Yeah. So, <laughs> for that. Yeah. Team name actually is the gentleman that asked me. He started the team. Um, I want to take it a little more seriously. He did not. Um, I asked uh, to start my own team, and he actually said, "Why don't you take the team name?" And then uh, just he never kicked me off. So that's how I came up with team name. Real creative, you know. <laughs> So we started cooking in 2012, and uh, the first contest we did, we had a week, week and a half notice, had a good buddy of mine, a team named Good Rub, he also cooks on Gateway Drum Smokers now, but uh, he ended up pulling out because he was going, we were cooking the Rotten Ribs in Springfield, he wanted to cook the contest in Jefferson City. And so our first, very first contest we cooked as a Good Rub because we could not get the uh, team name changed. So that was our very first contest, got three uh, meat calls, got seventh overall out of 70 teams, and we were hooked. So after that, we're like, well, we can't keep competing with this team name. So we sat there and kept, sat around, and we had, I don't know, 15 or 20 names just brainstorming. You know, oh, we're doing this. We're, we had all kinds of good stuff down. And then my wife just yells out, getting basted. And that was immediately the winner. So our next contest we did in, in June, had to sit there and watch this where I met Mr. Shear. Had to sit there and watch him win the contest. This getting basted was our second contest. Cool. Uh, at the end of the day, we, we settled on Squeal Like a Pig Barbecue, and we started competing under that name. And uh, we started uh, kind of randomly uh, calling ourselves, hey, Slap, Slap Barbecue, Slaps Barbecue, and Squeal Like a Pig, S-L-A-P-S, -S, Slaps Barbecue, just kind of happened. And uh, in 2014, we were on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, and they started calling us Slaps Barbecue. And so it looks like, you know, we just had to change our name from Squeal Like a Pig Barbecue to Slaps Barbecue. And, Rolls off the tongue a little better, and it's uh, way less offensive. There's people who think squealing pigs being slaughtered is a bad thing, but that's not why pigs squeal. They usually squeal because they're happy, but it's a whole thing. But so, we're Slash Barbecue. The thing I love about the Snake River Farms American Wagyu is what you get when you get the cross between the Japanese Wagyu, which is known for its marbling, its sweet flavor, and then you combine that with the American traditional beef. And when you combine those two together, you get that deep, meaty flavor from the American beef combined with that sweet marbling, and it creates a unique and extraordinary product.
toward a bus, toward a little cube back there behind it. Let's go have a look. Pretty much everything on this beauty is broken. So, you know, it's all barbecue equipment. We're very good on buying stuff, very bad on maintenance. So, uh, this stuff doesn't work, but we've got a replacement, so. Got the air conditioner running. Got the bed that folds out for the kids. The uh, very important Hello Kitty blanket. That's what I usually end up sleeping with. I uh, got the captain's chair right there. We drive down the road. The uh, broken refrigerator. Yeah, it's still hot. Come on back here, we got the bedroom. Beautiful. Shower, all the good stuff to eat. That's the bus. That's where we all sleep. We usually have, I don't know, we'll probably have eight people crammed in this stupid thing this weekend. I'm not even sure who all's coming down, but a bunch of kids and everybody else. That's the cooking happens back here in the queue. You can see my fine job that I've done screwing this thing on. It fell off one time driving down the road, so it's got a couple of brackets. Come on in. This is it. Game row, workspace, another table. And out here we got the patio, it's got the drums. Showing everybody my beautiful trailer. It's taking a long time. We're doing a little tour. T Mac, everybody. Maria. So we just got the drums. Just had this four foot deal. I had a two foot extension, so I put the drums on it. That's pretty much it. isn't just beef. Dry-aged beef has been around forever. We consider it a purifying process. It's really unique. It's incredible. It's a very, very subtle age flavor where you're taking a great piece of meat and you're enhancing it. It's the best dry age in the world. Dry-aged beef should be the purest, finest, safest product that you could possibly consume. It's a great eating experience. We're back here at the National Barbecue League. We just finished up the brisket category. Judging's going on inside right now. I'm actually getting cleaned up. I had brisket samples from Dirt Road Barbecue, Fergalicious, uh, and the Smoking Hills. All were fantastic. It's anybody game, anybody's game right now. Fergie put together a heck of a box, so we'll see, see if we see what the judges think of it. We're going to go inside now. Megan's in there with the judges and see what they think about all this hot brisket action. All right. Well, we're still here. All right. We got we got brisket action happening. There we go. Okay, we are back in the judge area. And go ahead, Tony, go ahead and take a peek at what it is that's happening. We have got the judges who, again, have different entries sitting on their plate. Each one is going to be judged differently, independently for appearance, taste, and tenderness. You'll see they've got some burnt ends. You'll see they've got some slices. You can also see, kind of zoom in here, you can see some of them are, are thicker sliced and some of them are thinner sliced. And you know, just a preference of how they're, they're choosing to do it. I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna ask our table captain a quick question. What is it that you are responsible for? Is there anything you're kind of watching, overseeing the, the teams? Okay, my first responsibility is to give them the numbers and make sure that we get the correct number and meet correctly to them. And then my job now will be at the end is to collect their score sheets and make sure they've filled them out completely. And then I turn them over to the person who enters them into the uh, computer. And do you are you also reviewing those just to see if there were any low scores or anything like that? That's not my responsibility. That would be the um, the organ the yeah the rep. The, the rep organizer is going to make sure she's going to look at those and if there's a discrepancy or yes, if she looks and sees some really different scores, she might come back and question. 
or my job is just to make sure there's a number in every <laughs> in every column. So I just I'm more an organizer. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, so so just to kind of recap that, we're going to make sure that the numbers are correct and accurate through each one of them. And then if there is some something that doesn't quite look right, it's really going to fall on the overall organizer for the event. The reps that are here, they're going to really make sure that um, everything is staying on track. And you know, if it's a super low score, I would hope that they would ask them to fill out a comment card. Um, I don't think that's always the case, but I know that's very helpful to those teams. Um, they are. Let me see if they, it looks like we're starting to wrap up. They're done, okay, they're done over here. So we'll kind of come in here. So you can see, hi guys, how are, how's it going? We're, you guys are finished, right? You've turned all of your cards in. So kind of everybody's kind of talking about, is there anyone here that has judged before or are you all new to the judging? You've judged before? Yep, three of, three of the judges have judged before. And we have some new, do you have some, we have new hobbies? Are we excited? Is this going to be a new hobby? Yeah. All right. So they're looking for taste tenderness. You, you'll see them. They're going to pull it apart and see what the tenderness is. Um, are we, are we ready to pop it back out to Jason? Do we know? Okay. Are we, are we ready? Okay. We're going to pop it back out to Jason. They're finished. We should be getting these scores pretty soon. That brisket looks so good. I cannot wait to find out who won because I don't, I mean, I saw some pretty amazing briskets. Great smoke rings. Take it back to you, Jason. All right, we're back at the National Barbecue League. I've got Tim Shear here, pit master for Shake and Bake Barbecue. All the turn-ins are done. We've got the contest behind us here. Tim looks like he's wearing half his prep table. But can you explain what happened here? I think I did pretty good. It's only half of it. It's not the whole thing. So. How did brisket turn out for you? Going, going into the brisket category, you had two calls, so it's still up for anybody to win this thing. Do you think brisket's going to take it for you? I love how you bring that up right off the bat. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, chicken. Chicken was good. It was yeah. good. Yeah, and the First pork place. pork was okay. Yeah. yeah. Back what, to you. What, how did how'd the ribs come out? We don't want to talk about that right no, now? I, I thought the ribs were really good, so I don't know. that. You know what I mean? I thought they were, I mean, I hope they're in the top five because they only called the top three. We don't know. But I really thought the ribs were nice. Uh, now brisket, on the other hand, I was not too proud of that. I just, you know, it just wasn't the day for that. It just wasn't your day. You know what, though? The odd thing about competition barbecue is when you have those days that you absolutely hate your product, you win. All, all we can do is hope the judges get it wrong. Yeah. We never know. You yeah. never know. So we've got a bunch of teams here. They're all lined up. All the pits are cooling down right now. The, the cooking's all, all done with. We're going to have folks, the general public, sampling in and out of all the tents, sampling the product that everybody cooked today. Any moment now, we should be getting some results, but I think we're gonna head back into Megan inside. All right, Megan's gonna go to the judging table. We're good, all right, so I have right here, Jeff, who's from Springfield. He has judged some, um, you know, some of these competitions in the past. And I wanna know, what was your overall impression for not just brisket, but for everything that you had, what was your best category today? What'd you love? I think the best overall category was chicken. The chicken was uh, just fabulous. The presentations, the presentations on everything was fabulous. Probably none better I've ever seen. And uh, the food was uh, probably better than any competition I've ever been in or I've been to. And uh, it was just, just fabulous. Everything was fabulous. Uh, there was. There was, it was all great, and just some were a little better than others, that's all. But it was all fabulous. Tell me about your brisket. Did you eat all the burn-ins, did it, or did nobody turn in burn-in? Uh, we only had uh, two burn-ins. Two burn-ins, and uh, that's all that was turned in. Um, we had, I had one that was overdone, um, but most of it was pretty good, pretty good. Did you how, do you, how do you know when it's overdone? What are the telltale signs for you? Well, that particular one, it kind of fell apart taking it out of the box. Yeah. So that was an easy one. That was an easy one. And did you have any that were just absolute standout, perfect score? Uh, no. no, no, close, close. But well, that's, that's good to know, oh, but very good. I'm, exci I'm excited to try some of it myself. So thank you for your time, appreciate it. We're gonna throw it back out to Jason and see if we can start wrapping up and find out who's gonna win this whole thing. All right, I'm here with Steve Hayden of 1-2 Barbecue. You had two calls going into the brisket category. 
How do you think your brisket came out today? And do you think it was good? It will be enough for you to take home the grand championship? I had a good brisket. Uh, we got people here from different parts of the country. So there's going to be some different profiles today. I tasted Luke's and his, his, I mean, very good brisket, a lot different than mine. So it's just going to come down to the judges. I'm sure there was 10 excellent briskets turned in today. Yeah, the caliber of teams here is, I mean, yeah. top teams in the country. So there's really no bad barbecue here. Yeah. If, you hit, if everybody hits their marks, gets the judges the product they want, it's going to come down to personal preference on the judges side. What are they looking for today? What's that flavor profile that's going to earn a nine from this particular group of judges? It could be you. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully beefy taste with a slight sweet to it. We'll go with that. Did you get burn ends in the box today? I didn't even put any on the pit. You didn't even cook any? No, no. I like the slices. I think I make a pretty good slice. So, you know, you're, you're just you're just getting two things judged when you put them in there. So I'll go with my slices today. Slices only. Yeah. See, it's around here in Kansas City. Well, we're down south of Kansas City. Around the Kansas City area, most of the teams think that you have to have burn ends in the box to win in Kansas City. Yeah. Now, you might say different. You've come into Kansas City and won. Do you do it without without burn ends? Yeah, I think I had fourth and brisket the invitation last year without any burn ends. So if I can do it there, I can do it here today. So there, there you have it. Kansas City American Royal, brisket fourth place, no burn ends. All right, thanks, Steve. Thank you. Good luck today. We hope we see you on a brisket call. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to head over to Megan now. Okay, I'm jumping in. Here we are, guys. So we have had a really fantastic day. We've obviously, Jason's talking to some of the front runners and what's going on. I just got done talking to the judges. As you saw, they really had some excellent turn-ins. Um, I did have some candid conversations with a couple other judges. I'm gonna pass along just, I think, some really fascinating information. There was very few burn-ins that were turned in today. So that's really interesting. And I talked to a couple people, uh, teams, for instance, uh, Cheryl and Lauren said, nope, too salty, aren't going to turn those burn-ins today. They did slices only. So uh, one of the big pieces of information that I pulled out of a judge, they said they had one of the briskets was extremely sweet, and that was off-putting to that judge. That, that when they think of beef, they think of a little more savory flavor, and they really were put off by that sweet flavor. I don't know how the other judges felt, but I did find that as kind of a fascinating little little tidbit. Um, wanted to also kind of talk a little bit about, we've taken some notes, and I don't think anybody really talked about, um, for instance, boomerangs, they're, they're cooking on hickory. So if, we, if we've talked about this, I apologize, but I thought that was kind of interesting, some of the different, the woods. Um, so Old Virginia Smokes using pecan, and looks like the brew hogs, they use pecan as well. That seems to be the overarching theme. We also found that out with Fergie today. Fergalicious Barbecue is, is cooking with pecan. Um, and I know other folks are doing, doing different things, but those were kind of some of the folks that we talked to and what types of wood that they're using. I know when we compete, uh, we, we're using pecan as well. That's typically what we're going to do. So I am going to look through my notes kind of recap a little bit. We got chicken. Okay, so what, wait, for, oh, you want me to go down to the Smoking Hills? Oh, so, oh, you, Jason's down at the Smoking Hills. Fantastic. I was being told what was going on. Jason, have fun with those to Cheryl and Lauren. All right, I'm here with Lauren Hill of the Smoking Hills. How'd your brisket come out today? Oh, I thought it was really good today. It's been a category we've struggled the last few weeks, but today it was, it was good. Excellent, excellent. So it's still anybody's game. We only heard the top three in each category. So fourth place in every single category across could take it or three fours and a first in brisket. How do you think your entire cook stacked up and do you think you have enough to win it? Cheryl's already called fourth place in the first three categories and we're hoping for that top three in the brisket. So crossing our fingers. So we were just talking with Steve over there with one, two barbecue. He doesn't even cook uh, point meat. He's not even shooting for burn-ins. Did you guys send burn-ins into the judges today? No, we did not, and probably 95% of the time we do not send burn-ins. Uh, today they were a little too salty to even consider going in. So you still did cook them, though. Yeah, we cooked them, but we turned in strictly slices. What would you think? What would you say is your best category out of the four you turned in today? What you, what what do you think the judges would like the best? Well, it's a toss-up between chicken and brisket today. Excellent. Well, good luck to you guys. We'll be cheering for you, and we should be getting brisket results anytime now. So we'll 
Hopefully we're calling your name shortly. I hope so. All right, back to you. Yeah. Okay, hey, guess what? I want to I wanna talk real quick with Mike Johnson about those beautiful burnt ends that he turned in. I had a question for him. Hey, Mike, question for you. Yeah. Did you just only turn in burnt ends? Was that it, or did you turn in no, slices? I turned in slices, too. You did? Yeah. Well, guess what? what? You took second place in brisket. No way. Yeah, congratulations, man. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, let me just tell you, he did not, but congratulations. So there you go. Thank you. Second place right there, burnt ends for uh, Sugar Fire. Let's talk about third place. Hey, Jason, who were you just talking to? We were talking with the Smoky in the Hills right over here. Uh, Lauren and Cheryl, they're set up right on the other side. Well, guess what? They got third. Third place brisket goes to the yeah, Smoky in the Hills. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations. So third, third place, third place, and then we've got a first place trophy right here. Um, let me see. Let me see this again. We have a uh, Bricktown Brewery. Thank you for this uh, first place trophy. Jason, do you want to take it down? First place. You want to get it? Going to getting basted. Getting basted. Let's head on down here. Head on down here. Let's go talk trophy. to him. Congratulations, first place brisket. Oh! Hey Tim. We're we're getting some hardware. I think uh, Tim's looking a little defeated down there. No, he's got good enough, man. He's got two strong calls. So. Who got second and third? Second place went Sugar to Fire? Sugar Fire Smokehouse, Sugar and Fire. third place went to the Smoking Hills. Well, the funny thing is, Anella from uh, Snake River Farms called me, wanted me to bring uh, uh, Sugar Fire a brisket. So I, I brought Mike the brisket, so both of those Snake River Farm briskets. So, uh, Worked out good. Excellent, excellent. So let's recap. What were your other calls today? I got uh, first and pork. First and pork, first brisket. First pork, first brisket. We saw this same scenario last time with, with uh, Dirt Road. First in two categories and didn't quite add up to the overall. Do you think you're strong enough in the other categories to pull it off? Well, yeah, I mean, you only know the top three, right? Fourth place, I mean, you know, those scores are going to be tight. Everybody's so good out here. So uh, I think you got uh, one, two, he's got a second, third. Uh, Timmy's got a first and a second. Uh, you got Fergie over there with some good calls. So, man, it's anybody's game. You got somebody's got four fours to win the thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations to you. We'll see how the overall comes up. We are still waiting the overall here at Blues, Brews, and Barbecue. So we're going to go over, though, with Megan. She's got the Smoking Hills, who just found out they got third place in brisket. Okay. So, all right. So uh, they just said, hey, who who got, got a call? And I said, you did. <laughs> You got a call, Lauren and Cheryl. You did. You took third place in brisket. You were feeling good about it. I yeah. could tell. It feels good to do this. Too salty on the burn ends, right? Yeah, they we, they were just a hair salty, and so we decided not to put them in the box, so we just went with the slices, but the slices were really good. So we were happy with that result. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. So Sugar Fire took second. Yep. I called that. I knew those burn ends looked really, really good, so I was excited to be able to tell him. And um, then... First place was getting basted. So, are we we do a commercial? Whenever we're ready. Whenever I I'm getting notes over here. So, okay. So that means one call for you guys. Yep. You're in it. Yep. Congratulations. We got three fourths and a third is what she's calling. So, <laughs> I, we can be there. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. I love those smiles on your face. We're gonna head on over to commercial and see if we can find out who took grand and reserve.
chicken. Chicken. Pork. Pork. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go chicken now. Pork. Chicken. 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 Uh, pork. Chicken, baby. the leading distributor of shipping, industrial, and packaging materials to businesses throughout North America. Millions of customers trust Uline to be their partner for high-quality, carefully sourced products. As a family-owned and operated company with 6,000 employees and an outstanding reputation, we've made customer satisfaction our highest priority. The Uline Advantage is our commitment to always provide quality products, unparalleled customer service, and fast delivery to meet your needs. It all started in 1980 at a dining room table with one product, the H101 Carton Sizer. Today, we have over 34,000 quality products to help run your business. Need boxes? We have the largest inventory anywhere. Looking for pallet trucks or industrial shelving? We have thousands of material handling items to choose from. In stock at every location and ready to ship the same day. Customer service is the heartbeat of our company. A live representative is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Place an order or ask a product question. Our knowledgeable customer service representatives are always available in English, Spanish, or French. There are no automated messages and no buttons to push. You are always directly connected. Browse our catalog and place your order on the phone or online. Our user-friendly website and mobile site let you order anytime from anywhere. We have 13 million square feet of distribution centers strategically positioned throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. All orders placed by 6 p.m. are shipped same day from one of our 11 locations closest to you to guarantee fast delivery and shipping savings. Get exactly what you need when you need it. We want to be your long-term partner and exceed your expectations every day. Quality products, unparalleled customer service, fast delivery. Come experience the Uline Advantage today. Barbecue. It's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life. And the fire is growing. There's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pitmasters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Woo! Boy, it feels good. That's why Smithfield Fresh Pork is proud to partner with some of the top pit masters in the country. These guys don't just smoke the competition, they kick some serious pork butts. These leading pit masters have made a name for themselves as experts and helped drive authentic awareness for Smithfield Fresh Pork to their large audience of followers. The real truth is Smithfield is the best pork and ribs I can cook. Smithfield, the passion they're putting back into barbecue, it's really exciting times in competition barbecue. Because it's more than just flavor that hails from Smithfield, it's world-class championship barbecue. Everyone knows the road to being king of the smoker starts with Smithfield. Barbecue. It's more than just a kind of cooking. It's more than just a hobby. It's a way of life. And the fire is growing. 
there's about 600 teams competing this weekend. Everybody's just hoping to get their name called one time, to get one ribbon. It's a fire shared by championship pitmasters and backyard barbecuers alike, handed down from generation to generation. And it's a fire that demands only the very best in quality, fresh pork, period. The quality of the meat when it comes to winning barbecue contests is, is number one. You want to give those judges one perfect bite of the best mind-blowing barbecue that they've ever had. Championship pitmasters agree. There's nothing like being pitted against other world-class pitmasters to flame their competitive fire. Barbecue is just a passion. It gets in your blood. Barbecue, it sucked me in in such a major way. And what hooks me on cooking is the creative process, the immersion in details. You know, where there's smoke, there's camaraderie. The barbecue circuit's great. Family, fun. Yeah. You meet the, the most amazing people in the world. Kind of like a big tailgate, but it's all really about family and all our friends from around the country. I love cooking, I love making people happy, and I love to prove that I have the best barbecue. And for 2019, Smithfield is bringing barbecue's best together in one smoking hot competition, unifying teams from all over the country and across the major barbecue sanctioning bodies. We're igniting the spark for the ultimate contest, the Smokin' with Smithfield National Barbecue Championship. Smithfield has developed a year-long barbecue points chase, counting pitmaster scores from barbecue competitions across the country. Teams can track their progress on our leaderboard on smokemwithsmithfield.com. The top 24 teams in the points chase will battle through a three-round playoff in New Orleans, November 14th through the 17th. The National Barbecue Championship is sizzling with opportunities for sponsors to surprise and delight cook teams with cool swag and prizes and interact with top pitmasters and customers through VIP events. Pitmasters have a chance at over $50,000 in cash. Also at stake, the biggest bragging rights is the unified National Barbecue Champion. The great thing about this contest, it unites barbecue. It incorporates all of the major sanctioning bodies to determine the true champion. It's been a great thing for barbecue as a sport and for the Smithfield brand. Everybody out here is competitive. We just come here, we have a great time, and hope we hear our name called. I think it's going to change the way a lot of teams look at competition barbecue. From the backyard to the competition circuit and the road to the Big Easy, Smithfield is changing the face of barbecue. The Smokin' with Smithfield National Barbecue Championship is igniting the flame of competition barbecue. I'm excited because Smithfield's bringing this great opportunity to find out who is the best cooker in the country. You know what's gonna be fun? Going head to head against my brothers from Texas. Hey, Big Papa, I hope to see you in New Orleans for the Smithfield National Barbecue Championship. See you in New Orleans, yeah! <laughs>
Thanks, guys. That's the award ceremony for the National Barbecue League here in Springfield, Good Missouri. Good job, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. We just named the overall reserve and grand champion. Our champion last time down at the, the Sprint Center was Shake and Bake Barbecue. They're coming in reserve, second place, and we just crowned Fergalicious Barbecue with the overall grand champion of the Blues Brews, Blues, and Barbecue. Well, and for those of you who are playing uh, along at home, we actually didn't get a chance to say who third place was, and typically that's what we like to do. So getting basted, you got third place. Congratulations. Congratulations getting to getting basted. Shake and Bake second place, and Fergalicious pulling in that grand championship. All right. That's all we have for you today at the National Barbecue League. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be coming back at you at our next event in a couple of weeks. Thanks. I'm Jason Day. This is Megan Day with Burnt Finger Barbecue. We're out. Bye. All right.